Hola, my lovelies. Welcome back to Cafecito Podcast here with Pinky. I have a guest. Lovely. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be talking about the series that I told you guys we would be touching bases. I asked for feedback on Instagram and Snapchat from all of you guys uh, in regards to what it is or who was the worst Zodiac sign that you dated. Um, so this is going to be called I Dated All 12 Zodiac Signs, so you don't have to. Yes, your girl Pinky took one for the team. And she took and she dated all of them. <laughs> I needed two more, but we, we completed that. So I can give you guys a full perspective of my experience. Um, if you guys are new to my podcast, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I throw this out there. Take our information with a grain of salt. Why? Because this is our experience. Understand and know, especially as an astrologist, I can tell you a sun sign doesn't completely make someone who they are. You have to look at different positions in their placement. You may be dealing with a Taurus, and then you date another Taurus, and you have two different completely experiences. Why? Because it has a lot to do with how they love in romance. So it's their Venus, it's their Mars, stuff like that. But just for kicks and shits and giggles, we're going to dive into this. And we usually start off with Aries because it is the first baby zodiac sign of the horoscope, but we're going to do it backwards. We're going to begin here with Pisces. Woohoo! Pisces! Pisces is in the house. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> so, have you dated a Pisces? I have not dated a Pisces. Um, I myself am a Pisces, um, and I, sh I have a few things that I would want to say. Um, obviously, I'm a very emotional person. Yes, so, that is yes, true. Yes, very emotional, um, very sensitive as well. And I can say that I'm a very creative person as well. So I've never dated one, but I mean, I can only, you know, see from my perspective mm -hmm. of how I am. Um, what about yourself? Have you dated one? Yes, I've dated a few. Um, so, okay, let, let's go back a little bit back to you. And I can tell you from my perspective, because obviously I grew up with you. So, so I know you as a Pisces. I also have a mother that's a Pisces. I know we're talking about love and romance, but collectively the energy of a Pisces. I also have another friend um, that is Pisces as well. So from my perspective, you, you guys are definitely sensitive. Very. Uh, you guys are definitely ruled by emotion. This could be good or bad. It could be like good emotion. You're really, really happy and you get that high of being so happy. Yeah. Excited. Yeah. But then when it goes bad or when you're going through it, you drown yourself in a half empty kind of glass, you know, yes, where I agree. You just, y'all can be Why very, just bury ourselves under a rock. Yeah. So yeah, I can definitely see that. Um, so the guy that comes to mind that I dated at Pisces was in my college years. Obviously, keep in mind, I was young. I was very diabolical. I was very selfish. I can honestly say I think he was one of the most loving uh, partners that I had only because he was extremely, like, unconditional. You know how people say, you know, oh, I love you unconditionally, but it's usually with conditions. He yeah. was, like, genuinely, authentically in love with me. So, and the reason I say that is because he gave himself so much to me and forgave me for a lot of things that I wouldn't necessarily put up with had he done that to me. Do you get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And we're not even talking about cheating because I don't do that. When I'm in a relationship, I've never been the one to step out of a relationship. But just, you know, I was kind of evil. So... Yeah. Um, and mean, you know, and he was very understanding. Uh, one thing I can say about the other Pisces that I've dealt with is that as a Pisces, you guys do have a tendency of when you're in a relationship, you one of two things, either you're really selfish in the sense of I want things my way. And if not, there's the fucking door. Mm -hmm. Uh, cause I dealt with one like that. And then the other side to Pisces is that you guys will sacrifice yourselves. Because, like, like I'm saying about that guy, he tried to mold himself to what he thought I needed as a partner. Aww. And looking back, I kind of feel bad about it because it's like, dude, like, how can you see someone that really 
is trying and going above and beyond and maybe even forgetting their identity to try to be something that they're not just, just to, to please you. Yeah, exactly. So maybe he was very compassionate. Extremely right? and compassionate, me. yeah. And that, let me say something about Pis Pisces are known to be very creative. If they are high vibration, they're always going to be doing something to release all that watery energy, whether it's through painting, whether it's through um, writing, whether it's through, and it could be as simplistic as like an example, when you start to do other things on the side as hobbies, yes. that turns into like a business type of thing. Um, an example like you, you've had multiple businesses yes. um, that you started aside from your job, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, and I do see that with a lot of Pisces now with Pisces men, obviously, that I dealt with. Another thing I do, you guys are known, you guys are known in the Zodiac as the artist because you guys are. So that guy that I'm telling you, he was a, mu a musician. So he was into like abandoned stuff, yeah. right? And he was very much into music. But he was like a poet at heart. Like he would write oh. me poems and he would write songs about yeah, me yeah. and stuff like that. So you guys are very much in tune with emotion um that's for sure and another thing is again talking about the negative aspect of a pisces uh, i did deal with one that was extremely narcissistic um they would tell you a story but they would kind of switch it like it's almost like you guys are so here's the thing though and this is what a lot of pisces don't understand you guys were naturally born to read people like, it's in your DNA, whether you're aware of it or not. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter if you're high or low vibration and you're not aware of that. You don't give a shit. You guys are naturally, like, your DNA is made up of being able to pick up and perceive people's energies. Really? Yeah, that, that's, 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 in your, yeah, yeah. that's in your makeup. So what do I mean by this? Whenever you're, and this is, and the reason why I'm telling you is because that guy that comes to mind, by the way, I just found out a couple of months ago that he, you're stalking me. I, I've seen you. <laughs> but anyways, Josh, I'm going to put it out there. <laughs> um, he was very low vibration Pisces. He was like very manipulative. And this is where I go with the fact that you guys are spiritually inclined and it's in your DNA. Because even though he was very low vibration, when he would tell me stories, he would read my reaction and then if he seen that I was like, nah, I'm not fucking believing that then shit. Then he would change it. Yeah. Up. So you can be more like, oh, okay. yeah. See it from his perspective. Yeah, yeah. So they do have a tendency of like constructing and manipulating what really happened so that you can see it from their perspective. Because keep in mind, low vibration Pisces is what? You guys have a tendency of sacrificing yourself for the people you love. On the other side, you have a tendency of sacrificing other people at your will, meaning you're going to get what you want, and no matter how I do it, I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was one of the things. Another thing is men, Pisces, low vibration, y'all are hoes. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm just going to, y'all are like hoes, but y'all are like sneaky hoes. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, no, I'm serious. This guy, Josh, <laughs> <laughs> you hear he that, was, Josh? <laughs> yeah, he was like, he was like, like, he would portray himself as this mature person, this person that had his shit together, right? And I'm not looking for games. I'm looking for something. Like he would sell you the dream, right? What you wanted to hear, yes. or what obviously. And you would look back because I had friends that knew him. He was very private about his love life. So they were like, no, yeah, I, you know, he's, I think, you know, he's serious about. He wants about, to settle down. Yeah. And quickly, no, I, I mean, you know, I started noticing those red flags where, like I said, uh, Pisces men could be very manipulative. They could be hoes and they're like low-key hoes, kind of like Scorpio could be. Um, but I think you guys could be a little bit more sneaky only because, like Scorpio, that's in them, that's in their DNA, that's in their makeup. Y'all, y'all just do that just out of spite, to be honest. Like, uh, you know, to try to one up someone. Mm. Um, so yeah, that was my experience. But like I said, the good experience I had, he was very, 
very loving, I think. He was too good to me. So what about, let me ask you, how was he in bed? Okay, so let's get into that. Because <laughs> I've had a few of those. <laughs> so, by the way, uh, I'm just putting it out there. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna dive deep into all the signs, okay? So um, I've always been the type of female to fully embrace who I am. I have no shame. Um, and the reason I believe that is because you should always embrace who you really are. Don't suppress it because then you suppress it. And then it, be, it becomes bigger than you to the point where you become addicted to something, right? So an mm-hmm. example, if you are the type that likes to be with multiple partners and you suppress it and you try to pretend that you want a relationship, what happens? You cheat left and right, you know? So anyways, I've always been fully about women and and being free and just being the wild woman I am. And I've always embraced that. Anyways, moving on. (laughs) That's my disclosure, right? Because we're going to get deep into this, girl. (laughs) Okay. So so Pisces mm -hmm. is a mutable sign. What does that mean? That means that you can adapt to any circumstance or situation Mm. at that in the bedroom. What do you think that means? Is it maybe crazy? The, yeah, you could get into whatever your partner is into. What do you mean by that? <laughs> so I'll give you we an like example. We like to try new, new things. things. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. And crazy things too. Yeah. Just to satisfy our partner. Or yes. To, you know? Yes, exactly that. So this guy that I was seeing, right? So the one I'm telling you that was like a bad Pisces, but in the bedroom, very intense because he was like intense in the sense of like super like emotional connection right Mm -hmm. fucking uh, eyes locking you know what i mean like that type of energy and i did mention a few times like you know have you done this or have you done that and the next time that we were together he He actually had it it yeah because he knew that that's something that he was gonna satisfy you and so i didn't have to like ask him to do it like he was willing to you know Mm -hmm. so when it comes to the bedroom i think you guys are very open-minded i think you guys are willing if they do like have feelings for you yes because i also dealt with another pisces that was like more you know about just physical Mm -hmm. and when i mentioned something they were kind of like and i think it was because it to them, it was scary, the intimacy, because there was no intimacy yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think that when Pisces is in love or does have feelings, you guys are more open-minded, a little bit more wild in the bedroom, for yeah, sure. Yeah, Pisces. Yeah, so uh, I can't complain. Even the bad Pisces, I can't complain, because <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> so, moving on, let's go to Aquarius. Ooh, Aquarius. Who's in here, uh, an Aquarius, huh? <laughs> so, have you dated an Aquarius? I have not dated an Aquarius. Have you dealt with Aquarius? Yes, I have. I have a couple friends. What's your perspective on them? Um, they're they're re- really fun, I should say, very social, um, and just trouble with emotions. Yeah, that is true. Um, very true. So. I think, and it's funny because one of, by the way, I forgot to say that I had a few uh, subscribers on Instagram that did say that Pisces was the worst sign that they dated, but there were men. How it wasn't rude. girls. <laughs> I just wanted to throw it out there. <laughs> How it, rude. The reason I'm saying that is because we're talking about Aquarius now, and Aquarius, y'all have a bad fucking rep. I don't know what y'all are doing to people out here in the world, but... They were dragging you guys on Snapchat. Like, most, the majority that had something bad to say about an Aquarius was the men, the men that are Aquarius. And I think it was, like, three or four girls that guys were, like, it was an Aquarius, never again, I'm never going to date them. So, let's talk about it. Uh, Aquarius is ruled by Saturn, so the planet that rules Capricorn as well. So it is one of the most distant planets. Uh, Obviously, that's where the emotional detachment comes from. Uh, What does that mean? Does that mean that Aquarius is a robot? No, it doesn't mean that because every sign has feelings. They just process feelings differently. So uh, Pisces, um, also Pisces is ruled by Uranus as well, which is the planet of rebellion, the planet of weirdos. You know what I mean? Like... 
the what? So Aquarius, you people are are out there. <laughs> they're all, I heard that they're also emotion. They get emotionally attached. Is that true? Emotionally attached? Yes. Yeah. For Aquarius. Uh, yeah, obviously, if they are emotionally, like, if they feel or they're in love with you, yeah, they're going to get emotionally attached. But usually, they're known to be the opposite. They're known to be emotionally detached. Really? Mm-hmm. Because you need to understand air, uh, Aquarius is an air sign. So air signs are not going to process emotions the way a fire or a water would, right? A fire is explosive and, like, to the point. A water is all about emotion. So you have depthness and you have quickness. And then you have air. And air is what? The mind. The mind. So it's more of processing. It's kind of like, and especially with Saturn ruling them, it's like before they even realize that, like, let's just say, for example, I'm in Aquarius and I'm telling you, oh, I'm seeing this guy and da-da-da-da-da, and you hear me constantly talk about him, right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, girl, you like him. It doesn't hit us until someone else. Oh, I see. Tell me. You. Yeah, because until sometimes they're like, oh, wait, you're right. I'm, like, they catch themselves yeah. speaking about the person constantly. And that's how they realize, like, the aha moment. Oh, shit, I have feelings. Or, yes. oh, shit, I do like them. Like, so they do have, like, a tendency of being detached. Even when you're in a relationship with them, they could be super loving and caring. And the reason I'm saying that is I have dated an Aquarius, but they have their moments where they're not as loving and you as the person that's dating them, you ask yourself like, what the fuck happened? Like, what did I do? Yeah. And it has nothing to do with you. It has more to do with them and what they're processing. It could oh, be work. Easy. It could be all yeah. kind of things. So they kind of detach, you know? Yeah. So yeah, but Aquarius, you guys were definitely dragged on Snapchat and Instagram. Um, because you guys are players, because you guys don't know what you want. Uh, that's what the majority were saying. Oh, um, no. I think it was, I think it's because a lot of people don't understand your nature. I think, from my perspective, because a lot of the people that were voting the worst zodiac signs are the signs that I get along with the best. So I think it's just because they probably, okay, here's the thing about an Aquarius, right? When it comes to relationships, they're not going to come at you. Like, if they spot you mm -hmm. and they're interested in you, they're not going to, like, come approach you. Like, yeah, like a Leo would. A Leo's going to fucking do what they have well, to do to get your to attention. Get, yeah, yeah. And Aquarius isn't. And Aquarius is going to stand back, watch you. Do your thing yes. until, until they feel fine. like, yeah. Yeah. So they're methodical. They're in the mind. So that can come off as, like, for some people, they're saying, like, oh, they're kind of, like, passive. I don't see Aquarius as passive. I just see them as they're methodical. And they also have a tendency of putting people in categories. So an example, if they're into you, uh -huh. right? I had a girl on Instagram. Um, I think her name was Lupita. I forgot, but... Um, she said that she was dating an Aquarius and she dated him for a year and then found out that he was being with someone else, right? Oh, the whole time he had a whole other relationship. Mm -hmm. But the thing was that when I kind of asked her for feedback, she was like, yeah, like we would hang out like on the weekends, right? Uh-huh. And I was like, were you guys going out? Were you guys like dating, dating? And she was like, no. It was more like hanging out, and it was either hanging out at his place or hanging out in her place. Okay. And this is where I tell, you know, my subscribers and my followers and my clients, this is where you have to use discernment. Um, you can't expect, if all you're doing is hanging out with a guy That's on a Saturday, for example, and it's not that they're coming around your friends or you going around their friends, it's like, y'all do your own thing and then come together at night, then you know what you're playing Mm -hmm. You know what that part is, right? Yeah. Which is just the fuck buddy. So that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, what that's I thought. Maybe she didn't understand that, but obviously, I mean, he knew what yeah, he was doing. Yeah, and he was putting her in a category. Yeah. So I was like, it has nothing to do with the queers not knowing what they want because they know what they want. And if they see you as a person that they want to be with, they're going to get you off the market. Of course. Like for they're sure. going to want to show you off to the world yeah. and be like, hey, you know. 
this is my lady, not just wanting to chill on the weekend yeah. in her place or in his place, exactly. you know? So I think I mean, that... it's only common sense. I mean, come on. Well, yeah, it's but... not hard for you to understand that. I mean, but yeah, but some people, you know, get emotionally invested. Let's not get all aggressive. <laughs> And sometimes people, you know, sometimes people lie. It didn't sound like he was lying to me from the feedback she was giving me. I just think that she was hopeful that it was going to turn into something else. But, um, yeah. So, so. as far as in bed, um, what would you... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before we jump into that, how are they in relationships? (laughs) So... I dated multiple Aquariuses, and here's the funny thing about Aquariuses. I don't care, like, if you're an Aquarius and you're listening to this, look back to the people you've dated. I guarantee you or assure you that most of the people you dated or were in a serious relationship were friends first. That's one thing about Aquarius. Really? Yep. A lot of the Aquarius that I dealt with, Uh we became, like, a couple after we were friends. Like, we became friends first. Or they were in my social circle of friends, or I was in their, uh, I was introduced to their social circle of friends. We talked, we hung out like friends, Mm -hmm. and as we got to get to know each other, we became a couple. Oh, I see. And that's been my experience for all three Aquarius that I've dated. They were friends first. And one of them took, like, fucking years before we even took it to that level. Yes. Um, So I think that's one of the things of Aquarius. You have to... You have to understand Aquarius out of all the sign is the one that is people are or consider them the rebellious or the rebel, um, which I think the reason why is because since they're born, it's in their DNA to feel or experience like rejected by society or mm-hmm. to feel different in some way. Um, so they have that little chip on their shoulder. Or they want to test you out. Yeah test the waters before they even jump into a relationship absolutely and the moment that they do jump in a relationship they're committed like 100 percent, they're committed like they want to get your ring you know what i mean like that type of shit um because one of the ones i dated we dated for not even like four months and he was already talking about an engagement ring which is why at that point i had how long were you with him like four months wow at that point i he jumped real deep in there. <laughs> yes, he did. And at that point, I was like, we need to slow it down. <laughs> and he's like, why? And I'm like, I think we need to give each other some space. Some space or maybe some time to even get to know each other yeah. a little bit more. So when people tell me they don't know what they want, they do. They probably just don't want you. Yeah. That's what it I is. Agree. If you're uh, dealing with an Aquarius and you're like, I don't know if they want me, they probably don't. So obviously, if they're not taking this serious or if they're not jumping in the relationship soon enough then i mean clearly they don't want you guys absolutely but um yeah they could be to other people and this is my perspective as well let me put it out there i'm a capricorn so i'm ruled by saturn so what i mean by that is that of course i'm gonna you know get along with an aquarius or we're gonna have similarities when it comes to how we view certain things um which is why i didn't find it difficult to deal with aquarius i didn't find it difficult to date them even though for other people or other spines, it could be challenging. As an example, you're a Pisces. If you were to deal with an Aquarius, you would probably feel like they're not emotionally supportive because you constantly need the need to feel like your partner wants you. And an Aquarius is not like that. So you may feel like they are cold in comparison to other partners that you've been with. Because they show their love in a different way. They don't show it in, as an I love you every fucking five seconds yeah. of the day. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, that's all I can say about Aquarius. When it comes to the bedroom, let's get to the nitty gritty. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I feel like Aquarius are freaks. Really? Yes. So, what I mean by that is uh, freaks in the sense of, like, if you tap into their fantasies, if they feel comfortable enough with you, to tell you their fantasies, their fantasies could be fucking out there. Really? <laughs> yeah. And they're willing. Like, they're willing to try. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> I see it more as them trying to experience Experian. on a physical. Because you got to understand, it's the same thing, like, uh, like an example of Capricorn, which we will get into in a bit. But when people don't know how to process emotion or when they don't know how to express themselves, 
we have a tendency of being able or wanting to experience it on a physical aspect. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? That means that an Aquarius, if they're not that emotionally, you know, mature or emotionally evolved, they may not know how to express certain things, but when they're in the love making with their partner, they're like fully, yes, fully in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, and they're very, very willing. And it's not so much as Pisces wanting to please a partner. Mm -hmm. No, Aquarius is more like I want to experience things. Oh, I see. I see. I've never done this, but so try like, it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That type of thing. Um, but yeah, they are freaks. I'm not going to lie. Whoa. I'll put this out there, right? And it's probably out of pocket. But I, when it comes to, and this is something I tell not just, you know, if you've been following me for a while, you know that how I think and feel about when it comes to sexuality. Sexuality is something that is very taboo. It's always been taboo. Let's not talk about it. Let's not. And to me, it's like embrace that because we are that. We're, mm -hmm. we're animals by yes. nature, you know, even scientifically proven. Our brain is um, connected, but our ruling connector or what drives us is our animal instinct. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Our natural desire. So, again, when we're talking about the bedroom, it's very important. And this is what I tell I, you don't have to be into certain things. I'm not saying fucking go out and do shit you don't want to do. What I'm saying is. If you want to try something out, do it. Do it. And why not do it with your partner? Your partner's the, the person the that is person yeah, for you to try things your with. Your safety net, you know what yes. I mean? So why not? And my point to this was, uh, I'm going to talk about that Aquarius guy that comes to mind. I'm not going to say his name because I know he's a follower. <laughs> <laughs> so we were friends for a very long time, right? Actually, I was dating a friend of his. Wow. Yes. Pinky. It wasn't even that serious, though. Like, I was never intimate with the friend. I was never, like, it was just on a superficial level. Yeah. It was, you know, it was, it was, he was boring for me, yeah. you know, the friend. Um, but I just like to social circle because I got along with everyone. Everybody, and they were you always you fun. Yeah. yeah. And we're always, like, going to different places, mm -hmm. you know, like, Vegas, randomly driving out there to Vegas or to Tahoe with a whole bunch of friends. Like, yeah. that was fun. So I was like, I'm not giving this up to Oceanside. How <laughs> yeah, can I forget? There you go, to Oceanside. So when we broke up, it wasn't like, like, oh, I'm so heartbroken because we weren't even that serious, you know? So I would still hang out with his friends because I was talking to one of the girls from one of a, another guy. And we would hang out and we would bump into each other. And it was never awkward because it was like not that serious, mm -hmm. you know? But then I started talking to the friend. He's an Aquarius. So then we started kind of like building kind of a friendship. I, I think that was our initial, like we got along. So we're like, we could be friends. Like it's not, it doesn't have to mm -hmm. be weird. And then the more we got along with each other, it got to the point where we started like vibing with each other. Yeah. And he was taking me out on dates and stuff like that. Right. So then we get to the point of intimacy, mm -hmm. right? And it was a wild night. It was a wild night of partying, booze, and other stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So I just randomly, <laughs> I just randomly asked, like, you know, we're getting hot and heavy. And I was like, have you ever tried this? And at first he was like offended, like, oh, how, how dare, dare you, you, right? But then he thought about it. And I seen the hesitation in his eyes, and I was like, let's just experience. Let's see what happens. Wait, was this your friend or the friend of the friend? The friend of the friend. Okay, okay. So then, while well, the friend was there, or no, was it no, just no. me and him? It was just me and okay, him. Okay. It was like when we were actually dating yes, already. Yes. Um, so, yeah, we did, right? Mm -hmm. And he actually liked it, right? So, me as a Capricorn at that point in time, I was like, yep, I can date you. But I can have fun with you. <laughs> oh, poor thing. So I kid you not, that experience, I think, to him was very liberating. And this dude, to this day, is still not over me. But I don't even think it's about me. I think it's about the experience I that gave he him. Had. Yeah. Yes. So get over me. <laughs> oh. So yeah, oh, and go I, try it out. Go try it out. Try it out. out. We <laughs> might not judge you. <laughs> they might 
might not judge you. Like Pinky didn't judge you. I'm a Capricorn, Stellium, Scorpio. Um, yeah, they, I, I do have a tendency of compartmentalizing, and if like I see certain things, like an example for other people, and I've noticed this with clients, they can date someone and feel like they're smarter than that person, and mm-hmm. they're okay with that, and that's fine. And you can't. I can't. You need to I be the smart one. In no. order for you, yeah, or they have to match my intelligence yes. or be smarter than me. Mm-hmm. And that's where I was going to say, like, an example, we did certain things, right? Me and that uh-huh. Aquarius guy, where I'm sexually liberated. Uh huh. I am very open when it comes to the bedroom. But when it comes to me seeing this person as, like, a, like having a future with him, uh-huh. I don't want him to be okay with that. Yeah, you so, so maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm very critical, maybe even judgmental in mm-hmm. a way. But I am. I'm gonna be honest about it. Um, it's the same thing as like for example, like I said, I can't be with someone that I don't respect or I don't admire. And even it's happened to me in the past where I've dated someone and I like I respected them and I yeah. admired them, but then as I get to know them, I feel like I could walk all over them, I'm over it. Like I'm not even emotionally interested no more. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, with him it was awesome. It was a good experience, but I was like, yeah, I don't know if I want my future husband to be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or there was just no feelings there because there really wasn't. I mean, we got along great and everything. We had awesome chemistry, which by the way, Aquarian men have a tendency of being very attractive. Even Aquarius women. I think I actually find Aquarius women more attractive. Um, so yeah, moving on. Let's go to, holy shit. Let's go to Capricorns. Capricorns. Woohoo! Capricorn in the house. Capricorn <laughs> in the house. Yes. Oh my goodness. Oh As my I god. god. <laughs> <laughs> a Capricorn. I've never dated a Capricorn. Never. Really? Yes. Like even casually dated a Capricorn? No, never. Never. But I've heard some things about them. Oh. Like what? Spill the tea, sis. I heard that it's a really hard to date a Capricorn. Is that true? I mean, yeah. I, 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 yeah, it is. But I heard that they uh, set high expectations for themselves. Um, and that they like things to be done quickly. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. So, what is it to you? Have you ever dated a Capricorn before? Yes, I have. And in, in our home, actually... There's a few Capricorns. Yeah, there's a few. My niece is a Capricorn. Including yourself. Yes, myself. And then my father is a Capricorn as well. So, funny thing is, my dad's a Capricorn and my mom's a Pisces. You know what's a good thing, though? That and, and you Capricorns I, are go-getters, okay? That's one thing that I can say. You guys are I'm always on the go. You guys set your mind into something and you do it. Yeah. You don't wait for no slacks, no nothing. Everything is on the go. So I and give you guys that. Yeah, that's true. And here's something that, like you said, we set very high expectations of ourselves. When it comes to dating, I think that if you're dealing with the Capricorn, and for those of you guys out there that are dealing with the Capricorn, I'm sure you can agree. It may be hard to deal with them because, yes, they do have high expectations on you. Mm-hmm. But the reason why is because they have such high expectations of themselves. So when it comes to dating, you mm-hmm. need to understand Saturn rules over Capricorn. And Saturn is the planet of what? The planet of discipline, the planet of karma, the planet of time. So time is of the essence to us. Time is important. We see time as, think of it as like, we see time as money. Because we're constantly in our head, we're getting older, we're getting old. Like that, I think as a Capricorn, even as a Capricorn child, I remember thinking like, at this age, I want to be doing this and this and that. I should be having this and this and that by then. And I was a kid, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So there's this massive pressure with Saturn that kind of forces us to grow up really quick and I know by the way Capricorns was one of the signs that got a very bad rep too they were saying Mm -hmm. that it was one of the worst signs to deal with because they were very manipulative that they were very spiteful and yes when we're talking about the shadow side of a Capricorn definitely but when it comes to dating 
first of all, uh, I, I had a few, I had a few on Snapchat tell me that they were all about playing games, right? That they didn't, they didn't even know what the fuck they wanted, basically. And I, and again, we go back to the same conversation that I had about Aquarius. If you feel like they don't know what they want, uh-huh. it doesn't, it's not that. It's that they just don't want you. You know what I mean? You're yeah. not a priority to them. Because, again, understanding that Saturn rules over time and Capricorn has this massive pressure, right? They're not going to waste their time. So if they're dealing with you, let's say they have you in a fuck buddy situation and you're hoping that they're going to one day decide they want a real relationship with you, it's probably not going to happen. Because to them, out of that fuck buddy situation, they're getting what they need or what they want but they cannot see long-term in you because yeah, if yeah. they did, they would have bagged you a long time ago. Capricorns know what they want. And if they meet someone that meets their standards, and it's not to say that other signs don't have standards. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that Capricorn is more methodical when it comes to opening up, you know? They, they don't just give their love freely. Why? Because, again, Saturn, time, karma, cycles, you know, cycles, when a Capricorn is in fact in love, mm-hmm. and let's say they experience heartbreak, they don't bounce back like, let's say, a Pisces would. Yeah, yeah. They don't bounce back like Aries would. Like, they take first of all, years, take years yeah, to move on. To get over that yeah. shit, you know what I mean? And the way I describe it to some clients that do deal with Capricorns is like, you need to understand that, see Capricorn as like the Earth, right? When there is an earthquake and the earth breaks, right? Even if many years pass, like, you can't fucking patch that no more. Like, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's just cracked, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So that's kind of Capricorn's vibe. That's their energy. It takes very long to bounce back from heartbreak, from, you know, so they're not going to give their love freely. Freely. You know what it's I mean? It's going to take time for, yeah. in order for them to actually Absolutely. Give and if you want to know if you're dealing with a low vibration Capricorn, if... It's the opposite? Yeah. If you've been dealing with them, let's say, for like a week, and all of a sudden they're telling you they love you or like shit like that, yeah, yeah. He, he or she wants something from you because we don't fucking go telling people I love, I love you. you right away. First of all, we barely fucking do that even if we do. We'll show you through actions. Yeah. We're not going to fucking be like, I love you, I love you. Like, yeah, yeah. like an Aries way, ah, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> a Capricorn won't do that. What they do is their way of showing you love is through course of action. Meaning, you get sick, they'll drive to you and take you some chicken soup. Um, you want to go out on a date and they see that you're kind of complaining because they've been so busy with work, they'll fix a date night. You know, like that, that's, that's, yeah, yeah. that's the time is very important. Yeah. Instead of um, so it's practical. action, speak louder than words. Exactly. Right? Again, it does have a lot to do depending on your placement, but uh, a Capricorn um, is not the type that is going to, and it, again, like I said, I, I as a Capricorn can tell you, I compartmentalize. If I'm dating you and I see certain traits in you, let's say I find you really, really attractive, but I find you really, really stupid or really ignorant. I'm like, you know what, this could be a good time, mm-hmm. but not a long time, you know, and I'm okay with that. And, yeah, yeah. and so Capricorns do have a tendency of categorizing. I know it sounds horrible, but it's the truth. You have to understand that because it's such a sign that is ruled by practicality, if they don't see you as future husband or future wife, they're not going to pursue a relationship. Or if they see, let's just say you're dating them, and then you start to show your toxic side. Yeah, yeah. And they feel like you are starting to either embarrass or you're starting to make them look bad in, with their family because Capricorn's family is very important. Yeah, yeah. They will break that shit up real quick because they don't want that type of energy to be a reflection of who they are, yeah, yeah. you know, because they associate their partners to who they are. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Have I dated Capricorns? Yes, I dated two. One was horrible, horrible. It was like dating me. Could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> wow. It was frust. It was the most frustrating. It was the most frustrating, but also exciting in certain aspects, the physical aspects. Um, 
it's kind of like when you get in a habit of fighting because you know that there's going to be like makeup sex God, like yeah. that. It was really fucking toxic. But again, I'm a Capricorn. So maybe that's what it was. We we're both. And stubborn. maybe you guys were the high ones too. So maybe both of you guys bumped in. Was he? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so maybe that's absolutely. why. It's like we wanted shit our way. And I am used to. Because you said there's a, a Capricorn that can be a high, uh, what is it? Vibration. High vibration, and obviously there's a low vibration. Do you think that you dated the high vibration? Do yes. you think, let me let me ask you, do you think you're the high vibration? Or no, Back you... then, probably not. Okay, so back then when you were dating back him, then, I, think he, was, I oh, think he was high. I think he was high vibration. I think I was. Okay. I was probably low vibration. Uh, I was younger, and again... I was all about me, 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 you know? Yeah. So he was, our arguments were more so like how he wanted me to act in oh, front I of see. like if, when he takes me out into the world, how so I he wanted. he was trying to control you. Not control me, but he, I mean, think, I think about it now, right? And I wouldn't want to bring someone around my family that is going to make me look bad that. You know what I mean? Yes, I agree. And I was like, no, don't talk to me like that. And he was like, don't, 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 don't do that. You know, don't do that. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't like, don't you dare talk to me. Like, no, he was just like, mm -mm. and the more he would do that, the more it would trigger me, right? Because I'm like, mm -mm, what? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was, it, it, I, I think he was higher vibration, definitely, because he was more mature, that's for sure. But it did become a bit toxic because it was like egos were always involved. And I think that that's the reason why it had to quickly come to an end. But the physical aspect was like off the chains. And I mm -hmm. think that that's what kept me a little bit longer than I should have been there. But again, keeping in mind that I was much younger. And then the other Capricorn that I dealt with, super, super low vibration. This dude was, first of all, he was a criminal. Oh, wow. Which is okay. I don't judge. Right. If, if do do what you must, <laughs> no, you know yes, what I mean. Yes. I, I don't care. He was very financially stable at yeah. a very young age because we were young. Yeah. But he was very financially stable, obviously, probably because of what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> but, why he was a criminal. Yeah, <laughs> but it was he was very low vibration because he was very manipulative. He was like he was a straight up fucking liar. And the thing is that he could straight lie to your face and you believed him. So he was a good liar. He was a very good liar. Um, so I see why people on Instagram were saying, I would never date a Capricorn. They're fucking manipulative and they're liars. Yeah, the shadow side of a Capricorn is horrible. Think of it this way. Why do you think they're represented in the tarot cards as the devil? Because it, it, it rules over everything that's mundane. Everything that's mundane is what? Sex, taboo, money, power, and possession. So they could be extremely, yeah, extremely bad news, you know? Um, but he was fun. So when it comes to the bedroom, I wouldn't say it's one of my top ones, but it was definitely... It was good. It was good. It was, good. It was, it was good. real good, actually, the high vibration one. Um, the other one was, it was all right. Uh, but yeah, I've had better, so... Aww. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> Capricorn, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, not to say... Um, here's the thing. I have very heavy placements, and I'm very, very drawn to intensity. Intensity and passion in a relationship for me is very crucial, but there's a thin line because that can cross toxicity. And well, now as a grown adult, I mean, I don't do that, but I am very like passion and intensity is one of my tr top priorities when it comes to relationships, because if not, I know that I'm going to want to break up or mm -hmm. want to step out, which I myself personally, I don't consider myself a cheater. So I'd rather just end that relationship. Um, yeah, so if I feel like the passion's just not there, it'll be fun for a night, and then that's it, and then that's you know? It. Yeah. So moving on. Sagittarius. 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 Who's Sagittarius? <laughs> we have a few in the Do family. We? Sagittarius. I've never dated a Sagittarius, but I do have guy friends that are. Um, one of my friends, actually, that I used to go to high school with, 
he was a Sagittarius. And I don't know. I don't have too much to say about Sagittarius. He was a very quiet person. Really? Yes, extremely quiet, embarrassed. Shy. Oh hell no, that's not a Sagittarius at all. He was he, he was, was probably like he probably has stronger placements in his chart. Yeah, but, but I've I've never dated one. Have Sagittarius you? is I've had a few, yeah. Sagittarius is a or they're ruled by Jupiter, which is the planet of benevolence, growth, expansion, knowledge, wisdom, um, travel. So they are definitely a very restless soul, meaning that they, and I think that's where they get the rep, the bad rep of like being players mm -hmm. because they do move on very quickly. Um, I think as they grow older, obviously they get more mature. Um, but yeah, Sagittarius was definitely one of the signs that people were saying, girls and guys, uh, that were very horrible to date. I think that it's because again, a lot like Aquarius, I think Sagittarius are misunderstood. Um, so think of it this way. Out of all the signs, Sagittarius is the one that is naturally born to be a teacher. They're supposed really? to teach. So they're usually very good talkers or very good storytellers. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because, again, think of it as like the traveler that comes across different people, different places, different everything, and they just take everything in. So that's kind of Sagittarian energy. So when you try to force the Sagittarius to want a relationship, they're going to go quick. They're going to run as far as they can from you whenever they feel that you're trying to force them or cage oh, them into yeah, a relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, however, if they feel connected to you, they are actually, I know a few clients that have been in like over 30 year marriages and they're Sagittarian. Yeah. Um, so do they have loyalty in them? Absolutely. Every sign does. I think that as, like I said, as they get older, they've experienced, um, they've come across many people or think of it this way. <laughs> they've uh, stacked up a few body counts. Once they get to that point, like they're probably satiated they probably feel like you know i've experienced the world already the shit. The let me house? settle no like let me settle maybe i'm ready to settle down type of thing oh i see i see I but see. it's more of not even a settling down because if you do you could be dating a sagittarius for like two three years it's a serious mm -hmm. long-term relationship but you being in that relationship will still feel like it's somewhat new because they're the ones that are taking you out on trips. They're the ones that want to go and, and just experience, experience things, things, you know? And what a Sagittarius really needs from a partner is to not, for them not to want to cage them, but to run free with them. Oh, I see. You I get see. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I think that the more you give them the freedom and the more you show them through action that you mm -hmm. trust them, the deeper they fall for you. I noticed that because one of the Sagittarians that I dated... I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't even, like, emotionally connected at mm -hmm. all with them. I just found them really fucking hot. Um, and the more he would talk to me about, like, his exes and that they were trying to change him and stuff, I, in my head, I was like, I don't know, why are we even having this conversation? Like, I don't care, you know? Mm -hmm. But I think that in his psyche, he was experiencing someone that wasn't trying to force him to do things, you know? Uh -huh. I was like, you could go two, three days without messaging me. I don't care. I'm busy. Um, and when we would, it was always an awesome experience. So I think that that and and him feeling like I was giving him that freedom kind of made him fall for me faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, when a Sagittarius is first approaching you, it's definitely a fire energy. So obviously, you know, um, they're, they're pretty loud. They're known to be loud. So if a Sagittarius is interested in you, they're going to make it known because they're like Aries. They're going to go towards you. Um, they do have a tendency, though, like I said, I, uh, most Sagittarius I've dealt with do have a ten Like, attention comes natural to them. Mm -hmm. Like, they get attention naturally. And, like, they don't even have to try. do anything uh -huh. or try to get people's attention. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons is because they're loud, honestly. I don't think I've ever met a Sagittarius that was quiet. 
there's something about them. It could be like their laugh. It could be that they just talk loud. Um, and the flirtier they get, the louder they get. Like they take up more space, yeah, yeah. you know, more room. It's like there's this confidence to a Sagittarius. Even if you meet a low vibration Sagittarius that's very insecure, you still see them as like someone that is confident. It, it's mm-hmm. just this energy that they carry with them. Um, but yeah, they they could be a bit aggressive in their pursuit. Um, so if you're ever wondering or questioning is the Sagittarius into you, they're probably not because you know when they are interested in you. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the bedroom. Yeah, how is that? My two experiences, one was like, meh, it was all right, you know. Um, the second one was pretty exciting, but it came to an end very quickly. Oh, no, <laughs> really? <laughs> it was like, all this hype for what? <laughs> I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Listen, this is, a, and I'm sure if you're a Capricorn, you can agree, right? Capricorns are about fucking stamina. Like, we don't want one round, baby. Like, I'll give you five minutes to rest and get your breath fucking regulated. <laughs> but you need to hurry up and yes, do it quickly. Like, like, no, not not like that, but like, yeah, it's, it's a whole experience, you know? Yeah, yeah. When it comes to that, and I, yeah, it was just like, it I think we built up a lot of hype, and then I was like, mm, what happened, you know? Like, yeah. uh, not to say it wasn't good. It was good. It was fun, but it, yeah. Yes, I agree. I also heard that Sagittarius men also um, like to learn new things from from their, like, person that they're with. Is that true? Yeah, it is, because, like, like I said, a Sagittarius, the, their natural way of being is to gain and give knowledge. Oh, so yeah, they want to learn. That's another given. When you, if you want to know if a Sagittarius is into you, if they're wanting to know about you, if they're asking you questions, mm-hmm. if they're asking you a lot of questions, um, even if they know that you're into something that they're not into, they will still ask because they want to have a more clear picture of who you are. Yeah. So they're very much into like getting to know you. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah. I mean, the, the shadow side of a Sagittarius is, is, it could be messy. They're really? messy as hell, especially when you add in the loudness. Um, they could be the people that steer up shit, that like to steer up drama. Um, they're a fire sign, so they could be quick to react in the sense of like being physical. Um, I had one Sagittarius that was extremely possessive and extremely jealous, and we weren't even dating for that long, and this one time that you know we were out in a club or something some guy came to me because he had gone to the restroom and a guy came to me and asked me for my number oh no and i was like oh no i'm sorry you know i'm I'm here with with my guy and i had i had when i as soon as i told him that i spotted him like right in the corner of my eye and i'm like fuck because i knew you knew he was the type he was a firecracker like he would you would cross the line with him and he would go from zero to a hundred real quick how did that go so he came and he he pushed the guy and he's like why the hell are you like trying to talk to my girlfriend and the guy was which honestly he probably didn't even know he's like oh i'm sorry i just saw her here and i thought you know and he was he was just trying to steer shit up and he was like so what are you trying to do and the guy was just apologizing oh so i just told the guy like just just go you know and then he turns to me all toxical like why are you taking a side and i'm like i'm I'm not." not like hello we're in a club he sees a girl by herself in the fucking table like you know like common sense like don't i don't don't know it was so much for me he he obviously knew you were alone so he went to approach you but he didn't see you with no one yeah so yeah that's like out-of-pocket shit and us capricorns we don't like those type of embarrassment displays uh, in public so i was like I tried to keep it cool with him. We got home and I dumped his ass. I was like, oh, oh. God, I'm not dealing with this shit. <laughs> All right, you hear this? <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh. But yeah, they could be very, very exciting. And they're talkers. So they, they, they definitely have a lot of stories to tell you of all their experiences <laughs> that they've been through. Um, but yeah. All right, moving on to. Ooh, Scorpio. Scorpio, woohoo! Ruled by Pluto and Mars. Um, 
Scorpio is also one of the signs that was being dragged on Instagram uh, because they're sneaky and because they're cheaters. Uh, obviously, every sign has a shadow side. Every sign has a low vibration and a high vibration. Um, so Scorpio does rule, or their planet Pluto does rule over the you know the depths, the darkness, the taboo, the sex. Um, so it, and it also rules over psychology. So. If you're dealing with a low vibration Scorpio, you're definitely going to be dealing with someone that's manipulative. It's the type of cheater that gets caught and will somehow turn it around and make it seem like, like it was your fault. fault that they cheated. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, because it, it, you know, yeah, from the many experiences I've had with clients when they deal with the Pluto, uh, sorry, not a Pluto, with the Scorpio, and they get caught. They like they are the type that will die before they accept anything. They're gonna just deny and that's it. That's a low vib vibration. Low vibration, yeah. And okay, yeah. Because I was gonna say, I know for the most part, well, some Scorpios. We have a, a few Scorpios in the family. Yeah. And I see them as more like a shy type of person, more like um, I don't know, kind of like just quiet, sort of like when it comes to their personal life oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. when it sure. comes to their personal life so, i feel like they're very like they don't want to really speak about it they're very yeah. like intimidated i should say they never talk about their problems no, not intimidated because scorpio is definitely a sign that's not intimidated um what it is is that people think of them as sneaky mm -hmm. but what people don't understand is that scorpio by nature they are sneaky so what does that mean that means that if you're dealing with a Scorpio, let's say you just started dating them. Let's mm -hmm. say you've been dating them for a month and they're already telling you their traumas, what they've been through with their family, personal shit. Oh, yeah, that's a low vi vibration. That's a, definitely. Yes. Low vibration fucking time. I know a few I mean, of them. Scorpio. Uh -huh. Because they're not going to give you their fucking traumas. They're not exactly. going to give you their weaknesses, you know? So if they are, in fact, telling you it's a low vibration Scorpio and it's also a Scorpio that wants to manipulate the way you see them. Um, to feel sorry for them yeah. in a way, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. Because I mean, by nature, they're, you could be married to a fucking Scorpio fucking 10 years, and you will still feel like you're getting to know them because they'll randomly tell you that they're into this or, oh, this cheesecake is my favorite fucking cake, for example. And you didn't know. And you didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Like, because they, they are naturally, that's who they are. And yeah. the reason for it is because they have to protect themselves they have to make sure that they, I mean, they're the scorpion, you know? What is a scorpion? A scorpion has a fucking tail with poison that is constantly watching their surroundings, yeah. constantly protecting themselves, even in um, a relationship. Even if, like I said, even if you've been dating them for like over a year or two years or whatever, you're always going to feel yeah. like you're just getting to know them because they open up very, very slowly, much like an Aquarius. Actually, no, an Aquarius opens up more easier. I think much like a Capricorn um, or even a Gemini, because a Gemini won't open up to, when it comes to vulnerability. They'll open up about everything else, but yeah, not yeah. vulnerability. Um, so, yeah, it, it, they're very slow. Think of it as like fucking peeling an onion. You know, you just mm -hmm. keep pulling, 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 because that's how a Scorpio is. By nature, that's who they are. That's... So if you feel like they're not, like they're being private, you're dealing with a high vibration Scorpio. Don't expect expect them to like tell, tell you, you their problems yeah. or make you feel like. And another thing is, you're never going to deal with a Scorpio that is going to tell you their experiences that they've had in past relationships. Unless you ask and unless they feel like you know them enough that they can open up. Um, I have a lot of clients that have been in like two, three year relationship with Scorpio and till this day, some of them don't even know who the exes are. That's how private they are about their love life. Oh, wow. You, you, you even, uh, for example, us, right? We have a brother in the family that's a Scorpio. He always kept his dating life, like outside private. the house, very yeah. private away that's from us, true. you know? Um, so they are, they're very, very, very private when it comes to relationships, relationships their, their vulnerabilities and yes. stuff like that. Uh, when it comes to dating, they have, they could have a very dark nature because obviously Pluto rules them. Um, this is where 
in a birth chart, you when you're dealing with someone romantically and you look at their birth chart, depending on where Pluto is placed and where their Mars is placed, those two signs, mm -hmm. you can even see if the person is mentally or physically abusive, if they have a tendency for that. Really? Um, yeah. And the shadow side of a Scorpio is obviously Scorpios by nature are, they don't trust people easily at all, if anything. Um, of course, if you feel comfortable to them and they, you know, genuinely love you, they're, they're going to be vulnerable with you, but they don't, even if they really love you though, I feel like even if they really love you, they're not the type that are going to follow you blindly. You know, they, they, they're going to keep that little idea that little seed in their mind of like still watching what you yeah. do even if they really trust you because again that's in their nature but if we're talking about a low vibration scorpio it gets dark really quick you talk about abuse you talk about physical abuse or mental abuse you talk about um you know sodomy and shit like yeah, that yeah. like it could get really dark for a Scorpio when you're dealing with low vibration. I'll give you an example. Um, at a very, very young age, I dated a Scorpio. It was the first Scorpio I ever dated. Worst mistake of my life. I was really young. He was much older than me. And he presented himself to be everything I thought I wanted. At that point, I mean, how the fuck did I even know what I yeah. wanted? You know? But um, as we got closer with each other and we got physical, uh, physical, like intimate, um, we ended up actually like moving in with each other and he was extremely abusive, abusive, like mentally, physically, it was just a fucking nightmare. And the crazy thing is that for a very long time, my parents seen him a certain way because oh, that's I how see. he would carry himself. himself in front of people, yes. but they didn't know the way he the really other was. Side to him. Yeah. And he was really fucking dark besides the fact that he was an alcoholic, um, and I always wondered, like, how do they not see, you know, like, his fakeness? How do yeah. they not see? Because they're so manipulative. They're so fucking manipulative. So that was my first experience with the Scorpio, and I was like, never fucking again. But then as I grew older, you know, my brother's a Scorpio, and I'm like, here's a man that became a man at a very young age. My brother has been a hard worker all his fucking life. He started working at a very young age. Mm -hmm. I agree. Had all his shit together, like, just completely different Scorpio that I was, you know, Did that you? I had experience yeah, yeah. with. Very wise, very mature. He was, like, very well put together, even through all the stress and difficulties of life that we were dealing with at that point. So I, I did have a moment where I was like, you know what, I think I should give it a go with the Scorpio, you know, because honestly, after that relationship, when I would date guys and they would tell me Scorpio, I would drop them like a bad habit real quick. Like yeah, I was like, you um, already knew what they were, yeah. how they were. So you thought that every Scorpio was the same. Yeah. So as I, you know, like I said, as I grew up and I started seeing my brother and I was like, maybe they're not all the same, which they're not, obviously. Um, I started putting myself out there and giving opportunities, you know, to Scorpio men. And I dated two after that. Um, one was very fun, but it was never like, it wasn't like a serious relationship. It was more like, casual and fun you know it was the type that we would just call up each other hang out go out party yeah. and just be intimate with each other that's all it was and it was always amazing it was always off the chart um even with that other toxic motherfucker that i first dated um that i was in a relationship mm -hmm. with like when it came to the physical aspect of it it was intense but i think he kind of ruined that for me because mm -hmm. then when we started actually getting like physically violent with each other um it kind of like that just felt apart yeah. you know what i mean like but the other two that i dated one you know the, the physical connection was amazing it was very intense and passionate and then the second one i actually did have feelings for so i think it made it more hot and heavy yeah. you know but um yeah, they have, uh, they're intense for sure. And I think that's the reason why I couldn't date them. So an example, if I, I, I'm surrounded by a lot of Scorpios. I actually have another client that I fucking adore, Debbie, if you're listening to me. I adore her. She's a Scorpio and she's very much like my brother, very much. She is like the type to always think of you. She's the type to always like 
like her family, like her fucking, you know, she adores her kids. Like she's just an amazing Scorpio. Um, she's the high vibration of a Scorpio. And when I deal with them like that, we get along so well. Like we just hit it off right away. We don't even have to like fully, ex like just by talking to her, yeah. I already know how she's feeling. You know what I mean? Like we just have yeah. that connection. Yeah. I don't know how to explain Probably my stellium, obviously. Um, but my brother, the same thing. He was like my best friend uh, for a very long time. And we just knew each other. We just got each other, you know? Like, so in that aspect, I have no problem. When it comes to dating, it's a problem because I can't deal with people that are jealous and I can't deal with possessiveness. And I think that my experiences on all three that I've dated, there was always possessive and jealousy. It, obviously, the first one was fucking horrible, right? Think of like fucking being dragged to hell. That's what it was. Um, the other two, it was a lot of like possessiveness and trying to tell you what to do and jealousy. And I just, I'm too independent. I'm too self-reliant to deal with a person like that. So I think that when it comes to friendships, friendships and stuff like that, yeah. I get along amazing with Scorpios. But when it comes to relationships, I just can't. You guys are a little bit too much for me. You guys are a little bit too possessive. And I just, I just can't deal with that. Oh, no. So... Have you had any experiences with a Scorpio? I have not. I've never dated a Scorpio before. I haven't. That you know of? That I know of. Or, or did you know of? No, I knew of the, the signs. The signs? Yeah, and I've never dated one. I think I've dated more cancer than anything. <laughs> How the fuck? I don't know. Yeah. We'll get to that in a bit. But moving on here, um, Libra. Libra, woohoo! <laughs> have you dated a Libra? I have not. I've never dated a Libra. Um, have you? Yes. And what is it to date a Libra? I wait. <laughs> I know one of my friends used to date a Libra, uh -huh. and they were together for a couple years. Uh -huh. uh, he was very romantic, um, and very committed. His, so he was a high vibration yeah. Libra. So what is your feedback on dating a, a Libra? So I've had two experiences with Libras. I had up until like, up until like what, a, couple, a year ago, I had only dated one Libra, like a serious relationship. Mm -hmm. And well, first of all, Libras ruled by Venus. And a lot of people think, oh, because they're, you know, ruled by the planet of love, they're extremely like, all about love, right? Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, that is true, but you have to understand that Libra is balanced. And the reason why it's balanced is because they're born into the sign of Libra because in this lifetime, they have to learn to master balance, mm -hmm. which means something in their life is going to always be off balance because they have to continue growing for their soul. To continue growing, they have to find that balance. So this is where we get indecisiveness. Um, I had a few uh, people on Instagram tell me that their worst sign was a Libra because they just cannot make up their mind if, like, their life depended on it. Okay. Which I agree. My experience. Um, I've dealt with a multitude of clients that are Libras, and I will tell you, they all have one thing in common when it comes to relationships. And what is that? And it is that they <laughs> obsess over the person that they're dating but quickly fall out of love with those people and then that person reciprocates and then now they don't know if they want it oh no do you get what i'm saying yeah yeah so it's like if they're chasing them but once they have them they're not really on yes. there or they're not really wanting they don't to know even, like yeah, they yeah. need to figure it out yes. yeah um and that's something that i can say from all the clients i've dealt with that are Libras, and let me tell you guys, there's a lot. <laughs> but me on a personal level, so when it comes to dating a Libra, right, they're going to be, yes, they're going to be romantic, they're going to be very thoughtful. They want to learn you. Uh, so the way of you knowing if a Libra is really into you is because they're going to come around you and really pay attention to how they show up mm -hmm. because to them, obviously, Venus is a Venusian energy, it's all about how they carry themselves or how yeah. they present themselves to the world. 
So if you see them, like, every time you see them, they're looking, like, spiffy, it's because they probably have a crush on you or they probably like you um, because they always want to be looking their best. Yeah, that's the problem, though, that they care so much for what people think that sometimes they'll stay in relationships that are just horrible for them just so people won't say, wow. Yeah, especially if we're talking about commitments, like marriages or living with someone. They don't want to disappoint the family. They don't want to disappoint their kids. So they put up with a lot. Um, it, obviously, if they're in love with mm-hmm. you. but And sometimes they stay longer than they should in relationships. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I find this to be more true when it comes to women. Women, Libra, have a tendency, kind of like Pisces, where Pisces has this innate feeling an example if you see that your husband or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your wife is struggling your pisces nature is going to want to help them Mm -hmm. even hold it down for them um whereas libra is the same way except when it comes to women they try to save the relationship at the cost or expense of their mentality yeah uh, their well-being um and this is very true because i see this again with a lot of clients that are libras um they you know stay longer than they should in relationships and yeah it, it, it gets it gets messy but when we talk about you know experiences with dating a libra my personal experience they're very romantic they're very thoughtful for sure but like for how long <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you said, once they get you, they don't know what to yeah. do. Yeah. I, I think that Libras have, and Libra, if you're listening to me, don't take it personal. Take it as self-reflection, right? Ask yourself, do you constantly have the need to be chasing love because you love the beginning stages of love? Or is it because you still haven't found a partner that meets all your needs? Yeah. You know, because I do see that with Libra, especially the two Libras I dealt with. Like in the beginning, girl, it was fucking amazing. It was like, oh, my God, you know, they're pulling all the stops for you. They're fucking amazing. The moment we had a little inconvenience, the moment I'm a Capricorn, right? Mm -hmm. If you piss me off, I'm going to fucking address that and I'm going to address that head on. Yeah, yeah especially if you like try to speak to me in a certain tone where I feel like you are condescending. That's one of the things that really triggers me. And this Libra spoke to me in a very condescending way. And like I nipped that shit in the ass real quick. So when he spoke to me that way, I was like, Hey, we're not going to fucking, yeah, yeah. you're not going to talk to me. However the fuck you think you're going to talk to me. And I wasn't even done with the conversation when he was already walking away from me. And I'm like, what the fuck just happened? Like, and I'm not the type that's going to go and chase you, right? Yeah. So I let it be. It took like two days for this guy to message me back and be like, oh, I'm sorry that I haven't messaged you. Like, I'm just not used to, you know, people or I'm not used to girls talking to me the way you talk to me. And I was like, what do you mean? you're not used to women having standards because I have fucking standards and you're not going to talk to me however way you yeah. think you, you want to. Um, what did that show me? That showed me that when things get real for a Libra, I'm talking about men because that's my experience. Um, they don't know how to deal with it. They don't like confrontation. Really? They, like they, they don't. They want to avoid that. Yeah. Like, he walked that way. Yeah, yeah. Like, he walked away instead of talking like a normal fucking person, like a fucking weirdo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just walked away. <laughs> and I'm like, what the? Oh, hell no. So I was like, so when he messaged me, like, two days later, he was like, oh, I'm just not used to people. I was like, either get with it or, or like, fuck off. Because honestly, like, you think that I'm, I'm the type of person that if we have an issue, we're going to figure it out uh, to the point where... We'll get to an Aries, but to the point where I would argue with an Aries that I was in a very long-term relationship with, we would literally argue till like 3, 4 in the morning. We would not fall asleep. Dude had to wake up early in the morning to go to work. And you'll have him there arguing. Yes. And he was like, babe, can we please go to bed and we'll talk about it? I was like, nope, we're going to figure it out right now. Oh, no. Like, I'm that type of person. 
So a Libra is definitely not a good thing for me because they don't like to address things. They like to pretend like things are going okay, even if they're not. Um, and then once the fantasy of the romance is over, it's like, like they somehow make it seem like you're just a horrible partner. And yeah, yeah. The Libra that I dated, I was fucking amazing too. I was like so amazing too. Um, and the reason I say that is I think I was the nicest to him that I've ever been nice to anyone. And because he was so sensitive. Yeah, yeah. So I just didn't want to hurt his feelings and stuff. And I was like super nice. And our breakup was, it was a horrible breakup. Oh, why was he sad? No, I mean, horrible, like, very fucking traumatic. Oh. You know, like, traumatic on both sides. I mean, fuck him, but me. (laughs) (laughs) Traumatic in the sense of because everything that led up to that breakup. But anyways, um, I was like, oh, hell no. This dude is making it seem like like he's doing me a favor by telling me, I don't think this is going to work out. out. I was like, bitch, I've been knowing it's not going to work out. I then moved on like <laughs> what you mean like just but, don't call me please. but yeah but the point is they don't address it this guy literally i'm talking about the one i dated like this guy literally didn't hit me up until two months after shit hit the fan yeah, yeah. like to tell me i don't think it's working out like like, I've been knowing yeah. that shit. Like, like why are you hitting me up now, now you know? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, so to me, that was aggravating. It was frustrating. It was just like, ugh, I just can't. So me on a personal level, I mean, yes, you guys have amazing qualities. Obviously, you guys are, you know, when it comes to, like, people around you and stuff, you try to bring the balance. You try to, um, you know balance the scales you try not to take size this is where a lot of people say that libras are two-faced because i don't think they are i just think that they don't like confrontation mm-hmm. period they don't um and when you push a libra to confrontation or you push them out of their comfort zone they retreat so they go missing or yeah. they ghost you or they like just don't want to yeah, deal yeah. with it like that idiot i'm telling you two months later messages me and i don't think it's like what i have been knowing that that. like yeah yeah (laughs) it was just so oh my god how are they in bed so that's another thing i don't you know my experience was very very little with two and it wasn't like (laughs) something that was very long yeah yeah. but again we talk about libras having this need of the fantasy of love right one of them was long distance and it was like we would talk about it all the time but we yeah, hadn't yeah. been physical yet and we're like oh my god we can't wait <laughs> and then we did and it was like crickets oh uh, yeah it was just dry for me it was yeah it, it was it was nothing exciting i'm, I'm nothing. not gonna lie and it's gonna sound horrible but i kid you not and i try to force myself to like like to like the sex because i really like this guy i hadn't had feelings for someone like uh, let's not get into that because it's a complicated story you guys maybe i'll talk about it at some point but just not now anyways um i wasn't really the the, the i'm the type that i could date multiple people mm-hmm. i can you know even be in a relationship with someone for like a while getting to know them and stuff and i, I if i just don't feel it i don't feel it yeah. and i don't get emotionally messed that easy so with this dude I got emotionally invested, so I was like, I have to make it work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't just open up to this dude for Yeah, nothing. yeah, like, I get you. So then we get physical and crickets, and I was like, no. no. So I told myself, maybe it was a bad day for him, maybe whatever. So I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt. The next day, here I am trying, right? And it was like, oh, it's just waking up like uh you, we should go get breakfast and like like if there's steps before yeah and oh, i'm like oh I, hell no i cannot i cannot i'm like <laughs> uh, capricorn scorpio stellium like uh, limits in aries like no chance in hell that i i can work this out yeah, yeah. i was like okay we just don't have that physical intimacy connection um which by the way after that happened right Uh and like he went back because it was a long distance he went back 
he would talk to me like often about when we were intimate and he made it seem like it was amazing and in my head I was like no it kind of made me feel like I don't know if I don't know I don't know if this dude like didn't have much experience in that Mm -hmm. I I don't I don't know what happened (laughs) but I was like "Uh uh-uh and then the second Libra I dealt with um it was a little bit better, but not not much great. So I was like, I don't know. Maybe oh, I just don't good. connect with them. <laughs> yes. I mean, they're good to look at. <laughs> but other than that, uh, no. Indecisiveness, definitely not an earth. Don't deal with an earth sign. Libra. <laughs> or earth signs, don't deal with a Libra. If what triggers you is indecisiveness. And like, I, I just... If I feel like I have to be the man in the relationship, I lose respect for you real quick. And to me, both times that happen, and oh, I'm like, with both Libras, and I'm like, uh-uh. So moving on here, Virgo. Oh, Virgo! Woohoo! So have you dealt with the Virgo? <laughs> yes, I have actually. I dealt with the Virgo. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say about them. I mean. They're very... What do you mean? They're not jealous whatsoever. Okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, they're more calm. I feel like they're, like, mellow. I feel like they're not really a... I don't know. How was it when you were first dating him? Um, In the beginning, it was more of, like, he would actually... It was different because in the beginning, it was like, oh, he showed more, like... You know, obviously taking me out, buying me things, yeah. like, and then obviously after a while, I mean, after years pass, he's more of a, like, mellow person, he's, he's... So he was more, like, out there? Yeah, like, he was more dating. out there in the beginning, yeah. And now he's more like a homebody? Yes. Okay. So, and he's... Yeah, I mean, that most, most earth signs are like that. Yes. So Virgo is ruled by Mercury, the planet of communication. Mm-hmm. Um, with communication does come judgment because I feel like a lot of Virgo's energy is communication, but not like Gemini. Gemini is also ruled by Mercury, but Gemini is more of like talkative mm-hmm. information type of thing, whereas Virgo is intellectual, meaning um, they like to look stuff up if Mm -hmm. they don't understand something they'll look it up much like aquarius like they'll jump on something and start investigating and learning about it and that's kind of virgo um they do come off as judgy sometimes really uh yeah and i can tell you from personal experience they're fucking judgy like they are uh but i think that it's (laughs) (laughs) um but i think that it's more because they have i mean I think they're one of the signs that also, like, Capricorn um, has a lot of expectations on themselves. So when it comes to a partner, they expect from you, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they, they are definitely, I don't know. I find it so odd with Virgos because they can be introverts, but they can also be extroverts. Um, I feel like the majority, though, low-key, I feel like the majority are introverts. But I feel that... So introvert is someone that is more shy, more laid back, yeah, more I agree, calm. Yeah, 100%. But they also have that extrovert side where if they're around friends that they feel comfortable, they're, like, joking and they're, like, hyper and, mm-hmm. like, stuff like that. So I think Virgo, one of all the signs, I think, is one of the ones that could be both, could be introvert and extrovert, depending on, like, their surroundings. Yeah, yeah. Um, but naturally, I feel like they do take more and of, And they're like, lovable, the, too. The very back lovable. Of, uh, they're very lovable, I should say. I mean, they see that you're having a bad day, and right away they're like, yeah. what is it that I can do for you to have a better day? Yeah. What is it that I can make, or what is it that you want me to do so I can... Absolutely. Yeah. Well, think of it this way, right? Virgo rules the sixth house, which is routine, um, which is everything to do with work, which is, to them, their way of showing love is by serving you. Yeah. That's, I agree. That's their 100%. love language. Or um, they're cooking for you. Yeah, making serving you. Like, yeah. they are doing 
a big what they know is, that you like yeah that is going to make you feel better that's going to make you feel loved that's for sure um, i agree 100 percent on that yeah i i think them and taurus i think are very much alike in that sense mm -hmm. um and when we're talking about earth signs like an example with capricorn a pa like an example if if I know that, you know, my guy, for example, and I know it's going to sound horrible, but I'm just trying to make a, an example. If I know that my guy is into like a certain type of food, right? Mm -hmm. And they had a bad day at work, for example, then am I the type to go out of my way to get them their favorite food, even if their favorite food is not a food I like? Probably not. I'm probably not going to do that. No. Virgos are different. Virgos are going to do that. Or Taurus are yes. going to do that. Yeah. They That's what I was saying. I was trying to give an example. This. Even though they don't like it, they'll be yeah. like, just to make you feel like you're happy. Yes. And just to please you in your ways, they will go out of their way and actually eat something that they don't like yeah. in order for you to be happy. Yeah. Yes. And I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so as far as, that as, 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 far as in bed, have you... Yeah. You're skipping steps, girl. Well, Damn, let's sorry. take it back. <laughs> So how are they when it comes to dating? You're going to know they're into you because they're going to want to be around you all the time. They're going to want to spend time with you, obviously, and they are they are romantics. Um, obviously, you again, sixth house rules over so, a servitude, which is like, what can I do? What can I help you with to yeah. make it better for you, to make you feel like you need me? Because in you needing me makes me feel like you're loving me. Yeah, you know, type I agree. Of thing. Um, so I'll give you an example. I was dating this one. I was dating this one Virgo that at the time was going to medical school and was also working at a hospital. And at that time, I was working in. I was working with my dad in the dealership, and I was also going like representing the dealership in court. And I was. I just had a horrible day. Yeah. He had a very long day, right? And he lived in Riverside. So from Riverside to where I live, it was about 30 minutes, right? So I knew that him coming out of work, he was going to be really tired because he had to wake up early in the morning. So there is no, like, conversation about him coming over or nothing. So I was venting to him when I was driving over here on the phone of, like, how the fucked up day I had, da 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 da, da. And he's like, I'm sure tomorrow is going to be a better day, babe. Don't worry about it, whatever. So we hung up, I stop by, put gas, and then I get home. As soon as I'm pulling up, I see his truck out there. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell? Like, what are you doing here? And he's like, oh, I know you had a horrible day, you know. So I stopped by Chili's and I brought us some food so we can eat and talk about your day. Yeah. And I was like, dude, this guy literally, like, had early classes and then had a long fucking shift. And I think it was like 12 hours. And still went out of his way to come and, like, bring me food yeah. and make it better. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. that's the type of that's the type of love that they give to you when they are, in fact, in love with you. Yeah. Because if they're not, they're no ass. <laughs> 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 they are. I dated another Virgo that was a low vibration Virgo, but he was fucking fun. I'm not going to lie. He was um, very much into, like, thrills, right? He was, like, a daredevil. He was a biker and he loved everything that had to do with like fucking skydiving and all kind of shit. So he was like really fun. Right. Um, but he was an asshole. Like he had, they have this wit, like the majority of them uh -huh. have this wit to them that is just unmatched. And I find that so attractive. Like, and, and that's a, uh, of, Virgo, uh, is that a low, low vibrate or what, what was it? A low, low vibration? vibration? Yeah. Well, the one I was dealing with was a low vibration. Like, he oh, was I just fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> he was yeah. just fun, and he was a smart Virgos, ass. Virgos, Virgos, <laughs> Yeah, he was a smart ass. He was sarcastic. So we go back to the conversation of them being judgy. The guy that I was, the one I was telling you, the first one that had brought me dinner after a long day at work, he was a high vibration Virgo. Yeah. Uh -huh. But sometimes he would make comments. You know, I've always been known to dye my hair... Different colors. Different colors. Yes. And obviously he was, you know, studying to be a surgeon. Mm -hmm. So he was already working in the hospital and he was going to medical school. So he made a few comments about that. Like, don't you think it's time that we go to like a dark color and stick with it? And I was like. Like trying to tell yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like. 
first of all, don't you think you're out of pocket for that stupid comment? <laughs> and he was like, no, babe, I just think that, you know, it's time that we start to really think about how we present ourselves to the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I took offense to that and I was like, well, I choose to show up to the world and be like, fuck with me, yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, they can come off a bit judgy. The other one that was just very low vibration, but very fun. Um, he was extremely judgy as well. He was always like critiquing how other people were dealing with their partners. Like yeah, I remember yeah. he had a friend and his <laughs> friend had a girlfriend and that girl was in Aries. So that girl like would just, she didn't give a fuck, right? So she and had his friend up and down, up yeah, and down, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a mob. Yeah, and he, and he would tell me, like, oh, I can't stand her. Like, she thinks that it's her fucking way. And I was like, why are you so pressed about it? Like, let him. Why do you care? Like, he allows it. Yeah, and he was like, no, but, like, even look at the way she showed up. Like, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, are you going to right now? So, yeah, I, I have experience. And I also have Virgos in the family as well. And they, I don't see them as judgy, but I do see them as like, they like, they like cheese men, you know, they like to Actually, talk. Actually, you know what? They like they, to talk. From what I know, he, the Virgo that I know is completely the opposite. You tell him something about what's going on and it's like sometimes he don't even want to hear it because he don't want to see that type of, he don't want to see the person that he knows, for an example. A different way. Yeah. But see... It's not that he's not, like, nosy or gossipy, because they do have that trait. I'm not going to lie, Virgos. <laughs> I have a lot of clients. <laughs> and what you're saying, though, is their way of reacting to protecting mm -hmm. who they love. So, an example, if they really care for someone or a friend, right, and you start bad-mouthing them or, yeah. like, telling them, guess what I found out about? They don't want to hear it because they don't want the perception of that person to change. Yeah, yeah. So, it's not that they're not feeding into that it's just that they don't like they don't want to see them a different yeah, way yeah yeah but yeah i i i i have experienced that with virgos <laughs> and that one low vibration virgo that fool had the tea on everybody all the friends yeah groups. yeah <laughs> it's a little a little gossipy a little, a little gemini energy there but yeah all right moving on leo Leo. Mm, Leo. <laughs> Leo, Leo, Leo. Have you dated a Leo? Yes, I have. So, like, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> How was it in the beginning? In the beginning, it was really good. Like, when you first met? Did yeah. Did you know he was into you? Yes, of course I did. They're the ones that actually tried to get my attention. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like a Leo... To be honest with you, in the beginning, it was all good and dandy, um, something that I didn't know what he was, mm -hmm. because after, obviously, I was with him for a while, I started seeing that he was very controlling, he wanted everything his way, he didn't, sometimes he didn't even let me do things that I like to do, so he was, like, very, like, if it's, if he doesn't like it, he doesn't expect me to do it. So that's something that I didn't um, like about him. He was very, like, controlling, I should say. In the beginning, he wasn't like that. Obviously, we had just met. Mm -hmm. So he gave me a whole different perspective of him because he wasn't what I thought he was. Mm -hmm. And I, to be honest, will never date another Leo like him. I don't know if maybe he was a low vibration yeah. Leo, or, but I wouldn't want to go back to one of them. Really? Yes. So that bad? Yes, that bad. So you would not date another Leo? No. And he was very gossipy. He liked, he liked to be in everyone's business. He was like worse than a female. <laughs> Shut I'm up. I'm not lying. Oh, yes. Hell. He was I very like, that in a man. oh my God. He was like, did you hear what happened to this? Did you hear what happened to that? Like, I don't care what happened to him or her. Like, it's none of your business. But he's like, I just didn't like it at all so leos are ruled by the sun <laughs> so naturally confident uh these are people that naturally get attention or get a lot of attention 
uh, high vibration Leos are extremely loyal, extremely hardworking. They're very passionate about what they do if they really love what they're doing. If they don't, they become very like pessimistic. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously the sun is all about, you know, attention, which is why they, they you know, Leo's in the sign is like the, the actor because yeah. they just draw in that energy. Obviously, if you think about a low vibration one, it's going to be someone that gets attention, but they're like selfish yeah, um, or even narcissistic. Uh, this is a person that could be, they could be extremely possessive because they are a fire sign. Um, they can also be, I see them more like selfish in the sense of they kind of expect their partner to, I don't want to say become them, but they kind of expect their partner to do what they want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because you have to understand that a Leo is obviously, you know, representation of, of a lion. Um, so they're aggressive in their pursuits of passion and, and what they're passionate yeah. about. Um, that sometimes it could become a little bit overbearing for the partner. Uh, especially if they are, in fact, uh, like low vibration. Now, a high vibration, uh, Leo, like I said, they're very loyal. They're very committed. Um, they are, I want to say, kind of like Taurus when it comes to love. They like to give gifts. Like they like to yeah. treat you. They like to give you queen or king fucking treatment, you know? Like they in the beginning they like to make you the center of, of their world, world if they love you right and i'm talking about like a high vibration leo yeah obviously a low vibration leo they're gonna want you or expect you to be the center or they're gonna expect you to make them the center of your world mm -hmm. it's like what i want when i want before anything yeah. else you know um obviously who wants to fucking deal with that um with the Leos that I have dated, I have a lot of friends that are Leos. I have a sister that is a Leo. Uh, I've dated two different Leos, actually three Leos. They were all amazing, honestly. I just think that one of them was, I, I don't even want to say it was a low vibration. I think he, I'm pretty sure he was high vibration. It was just that there were certain things that you, under, you have to understand that when it comes to the sun, the sun is a representation of ego, right? Mm -hmm. So, if a person is immature, I think the first one I dealt with was a little bit immature, that they were, like, too cocky and too selfish. No, not selfish. Selfish is not the word. They were, like, too cocky and too confident in themselves that they came off, instead of assertive, they came off as, like, showy. Like, you're trying to be a show-off. Oh, I see. And I don't like that. I don't like that in a person. For me, I, I need to be with someone that doesn't matter how high they are in their profession or how they're well, humble. That they're humble. Mm -hmm. Like, personality wise yeah, yeah. Like be humble there's nothing wrong with being confident if, if anything um you know all my social media is nothing but being confident and believing in yourself and hyping yourself up and all that but there's a thin line between being confident and assertive versus being egocentrical and i think that he was that like he was pushing the bar and i just couldn't stand that about yeah, him yeah. he's too showy i was like boy I'm the girl. Why the fuck are you looking at yourself in the mirror? Like, I can't stand yeah, that, you yeah. know? Um, the other two Leos were different. They were much more mature, extremely loyal. Off the bat, I knew that they wanted something serious because they are hot and heavy when they're trying to pursue you. Mm -hmm. Once they have you, if they're still pulling the stops to keep you, you know, attracted to them and yeah, keep yeah. you around, it's because they want something, like, long-term, you know? It's a fixed sign. So... Give me your experience of, of the Leo that you were with. An example, um, like when you started to see who he really was. I, it was just too much chaos between me and that person. It was too much drama. Um, I mean, he, it, it was just too much to the point where I was like, this is it. And still then, after I cut ties with him, he still constantly was like stalking you. Yes. And I just... It was an awful situation to go through. Yeah. I mean... I mean, they were very good in bed. I, I can give them that. The, the best I've ever had. 
So, to be honest, girl, I believe that shit. Again, when we're talking about passion and intensity for me, does it in a relationship? And the two Leos that I dealt with, one was a casual, casual thing. By casual, it was like a casual thing for like two years. I just want to put a label on it. And it was intense. It was passionate. It was as many times as we possibly can type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Hot and heavy shit. And then the second Leo that I dated, I actually, it was like a situationship. And then it turned into a relationship accidentally, I think. Um, It was a passionate thing. It was a passionate, like... He would pull all the stops. He was very thoughtful. He was always giving me roses. He was always like, you know, whenever I called on him, he would fucking come running. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, he would take me for the weekends, you know, and we would just get away type of shit. Yeah, yeah. And even to the point where, like, sometimes even, like, in non-conventional places, we would be into it. Yeah, (laughs) So... Uh, yeah, it was always fun, you know, and it, I think it's one of the most passionate ones that I've been with, mm-hmm. um, for sure. And I know that it was a fact for him, girl. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so tell me your experience in the bedroom. I mean, like I said, it was the best that I've ever had. Fuck, like that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. So was the toxicity worth it? Not really. No, no. So then it wasn't that great. I mean, it was it good, was great, but not that yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. It was great, but not <laughs> that great. To we'll deal with that toxic. Toxic. toxic? No, I would yeah. not deal with it. So then it wasn't that great. I mean, to me, it was. You know how they say a uh, guy could be, uh, what is that saying? When they say, like, stigmatized for girls? Oh, yeah, no. I've never had that. No? Mm. Oh, I kind of. Uh-huh. No. Because I think that I have a tendency of overpowering them, but I've been close to like feeling like what the fuck, <laughs> like what the fuck is like, this? Yeah, like what? I'm going out of my way? What <laughs> <laughs> type of shit? But yeah, um, sometimes though I have found like an example when when I was dealing with like the Capricorn I was telling you that was like. He was high vibration, but I was at that point low vibration. I was immature. I was selfish. But what kept me there longer was the relationship in the bedroom. Yeah. It was, like, really hot and heavy, and it was, like, makeup sex was, like, yeah, off yeah. the chain, you know? So I think that, I like, in that position, when you tell me, was the toxicity, like, worth it? Worth it? It was, because the <laughs> fucking sex was yeah, great, yeah. you know? But, yeah, maybe it didn't get as out of hand as yours. Yeah. Uh, were it to be like, no, it wasn't fucking yeah. worth it, you know? But, um, yeah. All right, moving on. Cancer. Oh, my goodness. Cancer. <laughs> I've dated a couple cancers before, and they're cheaters. They're cheaters. They're liars. All of them have been that yes. experience. Yes. And to be honest with you, like, they know how to like good, too. Yeah. Very yeah, good. They'll I tell know you a that. story. And you believe it, and then a couple days after that, you remind them of the story they told you, and they're like, oh, really? I said that? Like, you're a liar. And the story yeah. changes. Yes. They're liars. They're a manipulated person. Oh, my goodness. So once I've dated... So you dated like, with nothing but low vibration yes. cancers. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay, so cancer is... And some They were cute. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, they yeah, were. Yeah, kind of. Mm-hmm. Not like a Leo for me, anyway. Yeah, not, not like, not a, like Leo. a Leo. You're right. Not like a Sagittarius. We won't we'll go into yeah, that, yeah. like the pretty ones or the cute ones or whatever. <laughs> but um, yeah, so Cancer is ruled by the moon. And what is the moon? Mysterious shit, right? What does it represent? Emotions. But it can also represent manipulating emotions, right? Because it's the shadow side. So uh, Cancers on a high vibration are loving, they're nurturing. In the zodiac sign, fourth house represents the home life. It represents, you know, our safety net. Um, it is a mother figure. So usually if you're dealing with a cancer that's low vibration, they have issues. They have mommy issues for sure. Um, if it's a high vibration, they get along very well with their mother or are extremely close with her. But my experience has been they, they, they have mommy issues. Um, so, yeah, manipulative, low vibration. Obviously, it's a water sign. So all water signs 
in the shadow side could be very manipulative. Yeah. And they could be like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, they like to play mind games, not as much as an air sign. Um, for an air sign, playing mind games is more like an aphrodisiac you know Mm -hmm. uh whereas for like a fire sign it's the chase the cat and the mouse type of thing and it's like an aphrodisiac for water signs though i think that manipulation or like let me test you out on this let me test you out on that is a form of manipulation but to them that's their aphrodisiac so low vibration yeah they're manipulators very uh obviously a low vibration if what it naturally represents is the home What's the opposite of the home? The okay. streets, girl. Yeah. The streets. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> so yes, I agree. <laughs> and like I said, mommy issues. Oh, they have oh the worst. Oh my god, mommy issues. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. They goodness. either love them, love their mom too much. If it's a high vibration, they can have a good relationship with the mother. But if it's a bad, uh, low vibration cancer, they're they got mommy issues, or the mom has this fucking massive control over them over them why that is just weird yes man. like, like uh, i've dealt with a few characters like to the point where they're like leave her leave her like, yeah oh my goodness yeah. it's it's, it's so horrible <laughs> <laughs> first of all the cancers i've dealt with like i wasn't even that deep into it you know what yeah, i mean yeah. like it, they were fun to be with, and but as I got to get to know them, and as I came around, like two of them, like I came around their family, I noticed that shit off the bat, like mommy issues. Like they have this need to prove to their mommy that like they can do shit, and it's like what, like ugh. yeah, yeah. And then the moment that you dominate them, it's like they like that. And to me, that's a turn off. Yeah. It's like, uh, no. Like, I'm not your mom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They kind of try to put you in the position of, like, the mother figure. Like, yeah. you need to do this. Like, no, I yeah. know the fuck I don't. And when you're dealing with a low vibration, they also have a tendency of you playing the mommy role. So this could be on an emotional level, or this could be that they literally expect you to treat them like they're, they're your fucking son. Like, oh. like maintain them or take care of yeah, them yeah. and shit like that. No, I haven't had that experience, but I have clients that have been with, like, in long-term relationships with cancer men, and they're, like, not, not to drag y'all cancers, but they're, like, they expect the woman to, to be the one to yeah. be hustling, and, and it's, like, why would you want a man like mm-hmm. that? But I don't know. I, yeah, it's it's a whole lot of, a whole lot of bullshit there. Yeah, yeah. You're dealing with the low vibration. Um but on a good side, they're very loving. They're very nurturing. Uh, they are definitely homebodies. So if you're looking to marry a guy, definitely get yourself a high vibration cancer because these men will not only take care of you, they will emotionally make sure that you are good. They have, like, mental fucking checks on you. Um, they, they really, really put a lot of effort in the self-love, self-affirmations type of thing, how they treat you. And, and it's it's very endearing. The reason I say that is I have a few clients that are married to, to cancer men and they're high vibration men. Um, and they're like adorable, dude. Like they're the type to fucking hold the door for you. They're the type to hold even their purse. Yeah. Like, you know, like they, they just want to make sure that you're good, yeah. you know? And if they see a little bit stress or when we're having a conversation and the client is crying, they're the one to be like, babe, it's okay. It's going to be okay. Like, they're very nurturing, yeah. you know? Um, I didn't deal with those, though. <laughs> I dealt with, like I said, I didn't take it personal because it wasn't even that deep, but they had mommy issues. Another one wanted me to fucking baby him or fucking mother him in the bedroom, which oh, I, to me, no, that's weird. to me, it was like, Okay, weirdo. No, he was like, tell me what to do, which I'm fine with that. I I could play any role. <laughs> Baby, I could play any role. But it was just weird because I knew the dynamic he had with this man, and I'm like, oh. Yeah, no. Like, it, just, it, was, it was just bad news. But, um, yeah. Um, well, my experience with the bed sucked. In the bedroom? Yes. So they were bad in the bedroom. Yes. Oh, I, I didn't have that experience. <laughs> there were cheaters, and on top of that, they were they sucked to 
and then like a uh, boy bye. But what was the exercise for? I don't get it. It was just out. I don't know. So they're out here in the streets disappointing people. Yeah, disappointing. Wow. Well, the the cancers I dealt with, that's the only thing that they had going on for them. The, the bed? bedroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like one was. <sighs> yeah. It, yeah. Really. Uh huh. And and it was like a, a dominating type of situation because he was a marine, mm-hmm. so it was all about like control and yeah, like yeah. submitting. And I was like, oh yes, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the other two, it, it was pretty, it was pretty intense. Um, so yeah, I didn't have no bad experiences with can- not in the bedroom. I did with both. Wow, <laughs> such a disappointment, yeah. cancer. What happened? <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, they they could be. They could be attractive. I say they could be. I mean, every sign could be attractive, you know, depending mm-hmm. on what yeah, planet I mean, and don't everything. Don't get me wrong. But... They were cute. They were cute. Handsome. So just not getting Just not it anymore. No. Wow. All right. Moving on here to Gemini. 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 Gemini is another sign that's ruled by Mercury, like Virgo, except Gemini is, you know, more of quick communication mm-hmm. um it's the twin so a lot of people see them as two-faced they're fire signs right no it's an air sign oh really gemini is they're definitely intellectuals these are people that know a lot they know a lot and they like to share that information yes um, they love to share information. They love to tell <laughs> stories, too. Yeah. Uh, and they're the type, you know, it's funny. All Geminis I've ever known are the type that you can be texting them. Mid-conversation, they and call they you. And they call you. Yeah. Because they want to speak to yeah. you instead of texting. Yeah. Yes. It's it's this high need to communicate really They fast. get excited fast. Yeah. So they're like, you tell them, hey, you know what happened? And they're like, they, they're, like, wanting you to text back so they can't wait. And, and they, they call, call you yeah. because they're, like, what happened? Yeah. I want to know this. It's <laughs> been like that with all the Geminis I've dealt with. It's so funny because I tell them and they're, like, really? I've never noticed that about me. And I'm, like, yeah. You guys just have this massive need to communicate. Yes. And especially if it's something, like, you're interested about or you're excited about. Like, you just can't help yourself. But, yes. Um, yeah, Gemini is one of the signs that got dragged on Snapchat. The worst sign to date. Um, which I find interesting. Again, I go back to the same thing. A lot of the ones you guys were dragging are the ones that I get along with the most. I don't know if it's my stellium. I don't know if it's my Capricorn sign. I don't know what the fuck is going on. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But, again, a Gemini uh, is ruled by Mercury communication. They could be flighty. Uh, When it comes to dating, it could be a little bit harder to... It could be a little bit harder for you to figure out if a Gemini is into you because they could be flighty, like I said, and they are massive flirts. So you don't know if they're flirting with you because they like you or they're just talking. Or they're just flirting with you because that's just who they are. They're naturally, they're natural flirts, you know? Um, But I think the difference is if they're constant in their flirting. So what I mean by that is if every time you see them, they're flirting with you, and then throughout the week, they're still texting you and flirting with you. It's because they're obviously into you. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, because if not, they, they'll forget about you next week. Like, that's how Gemini is. So if they're constant, then that's how you know Gemini is into you. Because Geminis have a tendency of, like, not sticking around for that long mm-hmm. if they're not that yeah, interesting yeah. Uh, or interested in you. Um, but, yeah, a lot of people were saying that they are cold and detached or distant, uh, that they're hoes. Uh, which I agree because really? that, that's just their personality, but I think it has more to do with maturity. If you're dealing with someone that's like young, you know, you're yeah, in your yeah. fucking early 18s to 20s, like, of course, they're going to be like playing the field, yeah, you know? Yeah. I think as they get older, they mature. Um, but yeah, my experience with Geminis, I mean, I had one amazing experience that I'll never, that was actually a life altering experience. The other experience that I had was still a good experience. It, I just, I, I feel like we just didn't have that much chemistry yeah. to keep it going into a relationship. But, um, so yeah, I when it comes to them being like cheaters and stuff like that, I think that it's, here's the thing. 
if you want to know if a Gemini really loves you or really likes you, they're going to be honest with you, even if it's like hard truth. Yeah. Because one of the things is understanding a Gemini's true nature is to communicate, to express. So if they feel like they have to sugarcoat things or if they feel like they'd rather not tell you and just hide shit from you, it's because they, they're not really emotionally invested in you. But if they are emotionally invested in you, it's going to come off as them being honest, like telling you the truth, you know? Um, and that's for sure. Like an example that Gemini I dealt with, he was an open fucking hoe, like yeah, yeah. his whole life. He just loved fucking conquering women, you know? And that's the reason why we didn't date for a very long time. I got to know him like a year and a half before we even started dating. Um, and it was kind of because we kind of reflected on each other. Like we knew how each other was yeah and we're like fuck that i'm trying to get my heart broken and yeah, yeah. he was feeling the same way um but then we got to a point where we realized you know what we do have feelings let's go further into it and see where it goes and he was extremely committed he was like as soon as we started dating he was like having me around his family he was like holding all the stops it was a long distance relationship i lived here he lived seven hours away we would argue again go back to the conversation of when they want, they have this incredible need to communicate really quick. So whenever we would argue, he would just hang up the phone. I go to bed and then in the morning, it was like him texting me or calling me, like come outside. Like he drove the whole night to be here so that we can communicate so we can get on each, like get on the same page. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, when it comes to that, um, again, if, if you are dealing with the high vibration Gemini, you're gonna know, because like I said, he had a history and when he came to me, it was like, I already knew about him. I already knew what he was about. And he came to me and he's like, hey, I'm not going to pretend to be something I'm not. This is what it is. And yeah. I already know who you are, so you don't have to pretend with me. Let's just be real with each other and always keep it 100. And that's what we did. And, yeah, yeah. you know, it was, yeah, it was uh, a crazy experience. Um, what else? In the bedroom. In the bedroom. uh <laughs> Gemini. Gemini is up there. It's like my top two. Really? For sure. Yeah. He was intense. He was passionate. He was spontaneous, which made it more fucking exciting. And he didn't give a fuck. Like, it he was... He do anything, huh? Hell yeah. And he just manhandled the shit out of me to me in the bedroom. That's awesome. Um, extra brownie points in that. <laughs> and he was just so assertive. And the, you know what it was? This man had the charisma of, I don't even know who to compare him to because he can walk into any room and everybody end up talking to him. Like he had such confidence in yeah, himself. Yeah. Like he just, I, he just exuded fucking confidence. It, it was crazy. I would just watch him sometimes how he would react or interact with other people. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, dude, like, how the fuck? Did like, do he, it? Yeah, yeah, he was just... So, yeah, in the bedroom, it was very spontaneous, very exciting. Um, yeah, it was <laughs> fun. It was really fun. And the thing is that Geminis at heart are like a kid, meaning lighthearted. They, yeah. They're very light, lighthearted. They're very, like, they don't take things that personal. And I think that that's a beautiful way of seeing things and seeing life. I think he, obviously that person uh, transformed my life in many different aspects, but I think one of the two most important things that he transformed my life was in the sense that he made me be comfortable with being outside my comfort zone. Yeah. Um, Cause he really pushed me. Like he was the type to be extremely touchy feely and like physical in public and I, I'm as a Capricorn and Scorpio stellium I'm not really like that I'm not really the type to be hugging my partner yeah. or like kissing them and and he would do that and at first it was like embarrassing to me like stop like, you're you not know? used to yeah. it and he was like you know how people say that they love you unconditionally like how can you say you love me unconditionally but you you don't show me yeah so I was like what do you mean he's like yeah your love is conditional so he taught me the difference of like loving someone conditionally and loving someone unconditionally. Yeah. Because to him, it was like, even in arguments, he would tell me like, like, I don't care how mad you are. Like, you need to talk to me right now because 
your love doesn't stop just because you're mad. Yeah, like, yeah. It, he would always say that, like, it's not, don't put conditions on your love. And that kind of made me internalize a lot about my past relationships. Um, so, yeah, he made me grow a lot in a lot of different aspects. But, yeah, he was always fun. He was always fun, and he was crazy. So, yeah, there we go, Gemini. All right, and finally, we are in the sign of Taurus. Taurus, woohoo! Have you dealt with the Taurus before? I have not. Have you? Yeah, many times. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you have plenty of times. <laughs> so Taurus is ruled by the sign of Venus, okay, like Libra. Um, they are very, they're special. And when I say special, I don't mean it in as a compliment, Taurus. So don't get that excited. <laughs> <laughs> as another fellow or someone like myself, Capricorn, I think that, um, I don't know. I think we have a lot of similarities in some ways. Are um, they loyal? Yeah, it's, Taurus is definitely one of the signs that if they are emotionally invested, they are very loyal they're Ooh. like they're more old school i i yeah i, I can say that too, huh? yeah i want me a taurus what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <hell> no. <laughs> no yeah but they they are um they are more old school a lot like capricorn obviously they're all fellow earth signs um so let's get into like the negatives right they could be possessive they could be jealous um they could be showy which to me that's what i don't like, like about taurus mm -hmm. uh the people that i've dated it got to a point where to them it's like they want to from my experience they want to outdo your exes like if they so find they wanna out plant, they want to plant something like something like i'm the very best yeah i have this comparing to your other guy yes that's been my experience with guys, um, which is, you know, if you are dating a Taurus, just don't talk to them about your exes or what they did for you because they, I mean, unless you're purposely wanting them to do things for you, you know, but mm -hmm. to me, it was just like, it just, it was just an awkwardness, you know, like, yeah. uh, why are you trying to impress? Yeah. Like prove something, you know, um, they are very much because they're ruled by Venus. They, are, they do pay attention to quality versus quantity. And what I mean by that is even in their in their dressing, how they carry themselves, much like Leo. A Leo is always on point when, yeah. with their dressing. Mm -hmm. um, they're always very, very, like, well put together. Uh, or Virgo men. Virgo men are very stylish. Like, they, they really, how they present themselves to the world is very important. And it's, again, a lot like Leo. Um, and Taurus is like that, especially Taurus men. Uh, these are usually the type that are into like, you know, um, if they're into casual att attire, they're usually the types to look at the brands, like the Jordans, you know, the newest Jordans coming out, um, Ralph Lauren, like they're just into like brands. Yeah. Um, because it's, it's, you know, again, the planet Venus does rule and that uh, Venus is all about you know, luxury, the finer things in life. One thing I can say about a Taurus is if they're really into you, especially if you're a girl, they're going to wine and dine you. A lot like Scorpio. Scorpios do that. Scorpios do, my experience with Scorpio men, they are definitely the type to take you, like, to the best restaurants. They're, like, and it's not so much to impress you, like a Taurus would. A Scorpio would do that out just, of them. just because they like that. They like oh, the finer things, you know what I mean? Um, but a Taurus, a Taurus will do it, especially if you're first dating them. Like, they want to give you the good the best yeah. of the best so that you could be like, oh, Taurus, you know? You're good. Yeah. Because uh, that's one thing I can say about a Taurus. So, ladies, if y'all looking for a... <laughs> a one-line thing? Do you go out? No, I'm just kidding. They are definitely... Yeah, they take you to, like, high-end places. Um, of course, if you're not dating a dusty you know what i mean like yeah yeah but um yeah that and their 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 style the way they you know dress is always very impressive like i said a lot like a virgo i think um what else they are stubborn as hell that's for sure 
uh, they are extremely loyal. If and you know what? They're a lot like a Capricorn and a Scorpio. They take their time when getting to know someone. Um, it's an earth sign, so obviously it's going to move slowly. Uh-huh. Uh, so if you're like an example of fire sign or you're like a water sign, you want them to like fully open up to you. And it, it, it doesn't work that way with earth signs. It takes a while. They're not as methodical as like a Capricorn would or analytical as a Virgo would but they still take their time in getting to know someone. And the way you knowing a Taurus likes you is because they want to be around you all the time. They want to spend time with you. These are the girlfriends or boyfriends that if you got to run errands or whatever, mm-hmm. they're like, I'll go with you. I'm down with you. Like they, they want to be with you all yeah, the time. Yeah. They want to be around you all the time. This is where the possessiveness can step in, you know, because I did experience like an example. I dated a Taurus guy when I was in college. And he was very, like, what's the word I'm looking for? He was definitely not the jealous type initially. Mm -hmm. As they start to get emotions for you and they start to fall for you, I did notice a drastic change where they become a little bit more possessive. Even around an example like this guy I was dating in college, we all had the same social scene, meaning all our friends were his friends. So we were, like, that's how we met. So he knew that dynamic, and he was okay with it. As he started to have feelings for me, he started showing jealousy with some of my other guy friends. And I was like, dude, like, you've been knowing them forever, you know? Like, so they do become a little bit more possessive when they have feelings for you. Um, That's the one thing I didn't like. And another thing is that they are, they're stubborn as fuck. Like, they're stubborn. Like, if you tell them that the sky is blue and they woke up and they have a fucked up day and they're seeing the sky red, they're going to argue with you till you go to sleep. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like they're really stubborn in the way they view things or how they think things should be. So this is where, you know, I noticed this is not going to go nowhere with him because he was not really the type. To sit there and like, let's talk it out. Him To him, it was like, no, this is how we're going to do it. And this is how it's going to go. Yeah. And I'm like, the fuck it is. You know what I mean? So that was obviously a big issue. And that's the reason why we just went our own ways, you know? Um, But yeah, he was very thoughtful. He's the type. They're very affectionate. They're very affectionate. Like, and when we talk about like the physical aspect of it, um, I mean, they are, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, They're, they're, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, they need it often, Mm -hmm. you know, because that's how they function. That's how they, a lot of the earth signs, that's how they do it. You know what I mean? Like, the frustrations of everything in life, they're not the type to to speak it or Mm -hmm. to, like, express, oh, I had a horrible day and, like, they don't, earth signs usually are not that, they usually bottle up their feelings, and the way they express themselves or release the stress is through sex or activities. Really? Yeah. So, a Taurus, like him, he worked in a field that was very stressful. Um, so, yeah, it was, like, constant, you know? The yeah. sex was constant. It was never, like, that was never an issue. Um, it did get to a point, though, where I kind of found them a little bit bland in the bedroom i mean it's fine if you're like being intimate with each other all the time that's what relationships should be yeah you know what I mean? as a capricorn i need that shit you know what i mean like breathing yeah. like air you know what i mean yeah, yeah. but it, there's a difference maybe it was because i mean at, at that time i didn't really like i i i think in my whole life i've only had like two people that i've loved honestly the rest i cared for or I had feelings for. But it wasn't that serious. Yeah, so, so, so with him, it was like, if you don't make it, like, that fun to me, and then there's no feelings there, I just get bored, you know? Yes. So it, it got bored, basically. Oh, that's cool. um, but not to say that their stamina is on point. Like, they're on point. And one thing I can say is that they, in the physical aspect, they care a lot about their partner, so they make sure that, you're They're well satisfied. that you're well served before they are oh okay. that's one thing i can say about them yeah so yeah that's that's uh so Taurus. Taurus. 
<laughs> yeah, so they can they can go, they can laugh, you know. But but like I said, for me, I think uh, what is important for you when it comes to intimacy. I mean, obviously, me feeling good um, before they even like you just said right now. It's really important for us women to feel. I I dislike when you're with a man and they it gets to the bottom to business and it's like just them. Yeah, and it's like I didn't get no fucking satisfaction. Uh -huh. None of this. What the fuck is this? Yeah, what kind of horseshit so, is this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that has a lot to do with. Yeah, it. of I course. Mean, it's very important. Yeah. So if you guys are listening to this and you're a girl or you're a guy, make sure that, and especially as I'm giving you this advice as a witch, okay? When and the reason I say that is because I deal with certain types of spirits, right? And when it comes to the bedroom, like. It's an experience, and if you're the type to just, like, let's get at it and go like bunnies, that's fine, but it's it's it has no substance. When you make it an experience, and when I say experience, you take your time, time to make love. To, yes. <laughs> I mean, love, or if you're, you know, it, you don't have to be a to have amazing sex, you know? But the way I see it is, if you take your time, it's the buildup that makes it explosive. You know, yeah, and that's where a lot of people and for clients, I I've dealt with. I mean, I deal with on an everyday basis. And one of the things I think for guys is that they feel like they're falling out of love with their partner because the bedroom is not the same anymore, and it's because they forget that that there is a process to to that experience doesn't matter if you've been married for 10 years mm -hmm. like i agree like what is it that you're doing to continue building and maintaining that flame yes. you know what i mean mm -hmm. so this is why i always say if you guys have been following me for a while you know you know first of all y'all know how important sex is to me and mm -hmm. what i tell my clients and i basically put them on it's like listen you could be married to someone for like 15 years and in those 15 years i know and i understand shit happens life happens you got kids, you're tired, you both work. It's like you want to get home and you want to fucking rest, right? Yes. But if you want to maintain that relationship, you have to maintain the passion aspect of it. So this is why I tell you guys, like, it does, and especially for men, men are very visual, like, dress up, look nice. Like, if there's a day where you, you plan on, like, seducing your man or seducing your woman put some lingerie but yeah like like you know like present yourself in a visual a yeah. way that is desirable and this goes both ways mm -hmm. it's not just with women for men you know y'all get married and then y'all don't take care of yourselves and you think that getting home and smelling or having stinky feet is gonna make your wife want to like yeah. hell no you know so you got you got to put effort to maintain anything in life, you have to put effort behind it. So, yeah, definitely, I think that romance is something that people forget. It's something that you have to keep maintaining. Yep, um, I agree. And like I said, you know, my experience is when, whenever I've dated or been with a guy or been in a committed, let's just say committed relationships, right? Because I've been in a few of those that one was four years old or four years that it went the other one was seven years, and then the other one was another seven years. Um, but those relationships throughout the process, I always maintained, like, the, the bedroom is very important, yes. you know what I mean? And I think that that had a lot to do with why the relationship was great. Now, I'm sure if you're a listener, you're probably, Jessica, if it was that great, why did you break up? Well, it's quite simple. I was immature and I wasn't ready for those relationships you know um the last relationship uh or I should say the last committed relationship which we'll get into right now when we get into Aries um was amazing and I know that that was a soulmate connection and I just think that I just wasn't ready I was immature I just you know but yeah so again romance is very important and it's more of the build-up so if y'all wonder why your, your man or your woman is not really putting effort have you ever thought about taking a step back and realizing are you making sure that they're getting off because if you do i assure you if you're a guy or your girl and you make sure that the next time you make love with them right or the next time you have sex with them you make it all about them i promise you 
I promise you the next time it's going to be all about you. Like they're going to notice and especially for girls, yeah, especially for girls, like, or women, like you're going to notice that your partner is like more thoughtful. They're going to show up and give you roses, like stuff like that. Why? Because understanding that masculine energy does need a form of release out of everyday pressures and that's their way i could never understand why a lot of women and this is directed at you women because i know (laughs) (laughs) y'all um when you get upset or when you get in a fight with your partner Mm -hmm. y'all have a tendency of like holding withholding like not having sex with them and then Because you think that that's your way of punishing them. What you're actually doing is you're setting them up to go out and look somewhere else. That's that's what you're doing. You know, Um, to me, that's always been that's always been major. And it's been like very important. Um, And we'll go into it in the next sign. But with that person, I automatically when we first started dating, I off the bat told him because at when he met me, I was in the I don't give a fuck era, right? So I was like, listen, we can see where it goes, but like I remember it was like our first fight or something, and I was, you know, trying to get to it. And he was like, No, no, like, cause he was mad. And I'm like, listen, you could be all with your panties in a bunch, but two things are gonna happen. The other way around. Yes. And I was like, this is not going to work. And he's like, what do you mean? Are you going to break up with me? Because we fought. I said, no, I'm going to break up with you because you want to withheld sex from me. And I'm the woman. If anyone should withheld that is me. Be me. And I'm not. So like, don't. Because <laughs> there's the door, you know? So we got on the same page. And I kid you not, we'll get into that right now. But yeah. So anyways, my point is women, please don't withheld because like, it's just... It's you. It's just you. Think of it this way: when you go to bed, it's like you're putting a bunch of pillows between you and your partner. That's what you're doing. You're create creating, creating a wall. Walk through yeah, like, yeah. So it's like, what's the point in that? Yeah. Like, you could be mad and pressed all you want. Learn to put your emotions to the side. And I'm talking about if the woman feels like they need it, and then your man pursues you, and then you don't want to because you want to teach him a lesson. Like, don't do that. You know. If you don't want it, then obviously you have a fucking right to say no. But what I'm saying is a lot of women do have a tendency. When they're upset or they get into arguments with them. Yeah, and it shouldn't. Don't do that, ladies, because then you're going to be crying once they cheat. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, pretty much, yeah. (laughs) But, yeah, that's the the spiel. All right, so getting into the last sign. All right, my lovelies. Finally, we are at the very fucking end. Y'all have no idea what a headache this podcast has been. Yes, I definitely agree. (laughs) We literally did the first one. It was like a two-hour fucking video, and the, the, the sound was horrible. Then the second time we did it, it cut us out. Then the third time, our microphones died. <laughs> so we are finally at the very end, and we are with the sign of Aries. Aries is the baby of the zodiac. It is the first of the zodiac. And people that were born, obviously, March 21st all the way to April 19th are considered, obviously, an Aries, just so the people that don't know. Like myself, if I was to listen to it, I wouldn't know what's... So you're telling me this whole time I should have given dates? Yeah, we should have. Oh, hell. (laughs) (laughs) So Mars rules over the sign of Aries, and Mars is the sign of aggression. It is the sign of action. It is the sign of movement. So the way I think of Aries people is a lot like a child. Um, when you take them to a store and they want a toy and you say no to them, they throw a fit. Um, most of them have issues regulating their anger, uh, primarily like early stages, obviously as they get older, they get more mature. Um, but yeah, Aries is definitely about action, which is why a lot of athletes are actually ruled by or are in the uh, sign of Aries. Very ambitious and competitive, right? Competitive, yeah. yeah. Um, extremely competitive. Uh, they take competition to the next level, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I, I think out of all the signs, I would say Leo 
Leo, Aries, um, Sagittarius as well. Um, obviously, they're fire signs. They're ruled by fire. So it's going to be much more uh, quick when we're talking about reactions, right? Like an earth sign, an earth sign to get them to get out of their, you know, to, to flip the shit, basically. It takes them a while because they're much more earthly bound, meaning that they're, they have more resistance to like pressure and stuff like that. An air sign um, will completely disassociate, meaning they will disconnect from the situation so they don't react a certain way. Uh, obviously a water energy water i i compare water uh water signs to fire signs because they're both on the extreme meaning if you mess with the water sign and you really push them to like their limit they will lose their shit completely because they're overruled by emotion and a fire sign is not about emotion it's about action so they get physical faster yeah, yeah. you know what i mean um but yeah, Aries people are very straightforward. They're very bold. They're very to the point. If you're dating an Aries, you're going to know that they're interested in you. Like, there's no fucking hiding it. They, they're not They're not nonchalant, you know? Have you been with an Aries before? I've been with many Aries, actually. Um, one of my favorite people, honestly. I get along with Aries. I can spot an Aries just like I could spot a Scorpio. Um or a Capricorn, uh, or an Aquarius. I can spot them, like, off the bat. And Aries people have always came into my life, primarily love interests have always, most of them have been Aries. Um, I just, first of all, I have Aries in my eighth house, uh, which if you know about house placements, you know the importance of that, right? And eighth house is all about death transformation, but we're also talking about like soul type. Yeah, yeah. So people that have came into my life that are Aries have not been fleeting. As an example, even if they were like casual, it has never been fleeting, meaning they usually stick around for a while. Yeah. Do you get me? Um, whereas like with other signs, it could have been something casual and that was it. For Aries, because it's in my eighth house, of course, for everyone, it's going to be different. But for me... Um, they come in uh, in important parts of my life. So as an example, first of all, have you dated Aries people? I have not. So you've never dated them? Never. Do you know any Aries people? No. You don't? Not that I'm aware of, no. Well, um, so I've have, I have friends that are Aries. Um, one that comes to mind is the one that I've known for a very long time. And he again he's always been a friend of mine but from day one he was like i want you from day one like there is no there's no sugar coating yeah, yeah. you know he told you straight yeah what he wanted from yeah you. pretty much yeah um but i was like no you're silly you're crazy right but because it, it was a friendship and i just didn't want to mess that up um besides the fact that he got to know me in certain vulnerable aspects in my life um, so I just didn't want to fuck that up, you know, and I was like, no, it's, we'll just keep it as friends. But throughout the whole year, the many years, if you're listening to me, cause I know you watch my shit, um, throughout the many years, he's always shot his shot. Like he doesn't stop. You yeah. know what I mean? And he's Aries, constantly, not constantly, but he will bring it up occasionally, you know? And that's the thing about Aries. They can't fucking help it. They you can't know? control it. Yeah. They're so excited yeah. when they talk to you that they're like, you know, I still want you. Yeah, like, it's just this, they, they just go for what they want, which is very admirable for me. I, like I said, you know, I'm very addicted to, like, the passion and then the intensity, which with Aries people, I find their intensity to be extremely invigorating, and it's just admirable. Like, when you see them going towards their goals and making shit happen, it's, it's something that you can help to, or at least for myself, I can help to admire that. Um, but yeah, so I've dated a few Aries. Uh, three stick out the most when we're talking about long-term relationships. One I lived with, um, which was a very long-term relationship. Um, then after that, uh, I did deal with another Aries for a while. Um, it was a committed relationship as well. 
And then the other one that comes to mind, which is one that I've known the longest, I think, um, that one, that's like a, it's just complex. So anyways, um, let's talk about the dating aspect of it, right? So like I said, remember how I was saying that Aries uh, people remind me of like little kids, right? Yes. Because of their energy, because of their enthusiasm. So when I first started dating this Aries guy, which by the way, keep in mind, he was like the complete opposite, I thought, of an Aries because he was very shy, right? He wasn't like very talkative. He was like just shy. Uh, as I got to know him, by the way, when we started dating, we kept a low profile. Mm -hmm. We didn't tell my family or anything because I just didn't, I didn't want nobody to be in my business as I usually am. Um, so we kept a very low profile, mm -hmm. but he couldn't help it in certain things. He was so excited to yeah, tell everyone. Yeah, it was like, so I, he knew that I didn't want my family to know. And one time me and my oldest sister were hanging out in, in the front, uh, the front porch of our house. And he was coming up the hill with his friends that they were playing basketball. And as soon as I seen him, I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, he's coming, right? So I'm thinking, don't stare at me. Don't stare at me. And what does he do? He comes up to me and taps my foot with his foot like a fucking weirdo. And I'm like, oh, my God. And my sister looks at me, and she's like, what the hell is that? And I'm like, I don't know. Of course, she didn't know I was talking yeah, to him yeah. then. Um, but that's how they are. Like, they just can't help it. I felt like that was his way of, like, telling my sister, but at the same time, like, telling his friends because he used to run with friends, and yeah. his friends were always around us, um, and they didn't know that I was talking to him, too. So I think that was his way of kind of yeah, marking, yeah. marking his territory. As I got to know him more, um, obviously I, I realized, yeah, this is an Aries because he was a hard worker. He was, like, very – he he's big on family, Um one thing that I can say from other areas that I've dealt with, if they really care for you or they are emotionally invested in you, they're going to bring you around their family and around their friends because to them, what they want to do is they want to show you to the world. Yeah. So if you're dating an Aries, let's say you've been dating them for six months, they haven't brought you around their friends or they haven't brought you around their family. They don't want to. They don't want you. They're probably not taking you seriously because like I said, um, they're so excited. They want to just like yell it and scream it to the world. You know, uh, they're very bold in that aspect when it comes to relationships. Um, even in, in that time when I was dating that guy that I, you know, that I lived with, um, as I got to know him, you know, there are traits that I think like that of marking their territory, they could be very territorial, not in an aggressive way, but in a very masculine yeah, way. Yeah. Um, after dating for a while and I was still keeping it under wraps, he kind of, you know, brought up a conversation. There was a social outing that we were going to have where we're going to be going to LA to this gathering. And I told him, not in, as in inviting him, but I told yeah, him, yeah. like, I'm not going to be able to hang out with you this weekend. So when I brought that up, it was like, at that point, we had the talk, right? He was like, okay, you know what? We've been dealing with each other for this long and like, no one knows that I'm dating you. Like, I don't like to feel like I'm a secret. <laughs> <laughs> and keep in mind, at that time, I was, in fact, dating another guy. I was dating the Leo guy. So you were dating, you seemed to tell me you were dating two people at once? Yeah, I, I, I've dated about 10 people at the same time. Dating, to me, is very different than when I am in a relationship. Oh, I see. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And this is something that I tell my clients and my listeners all the time. When you are in a dating phase, that means that you're free to do whatever you want. Yes. You don't owe no loyalty to anyone until they actively pursue you and tell you, hey, you know what, lovely? I want to be with you. Then then that's different. Yeah. And, and if you decide, yes, you know, fine, let's give it a go or whatever, then you are in a committed relationship. There's a difference. A lot of people don't know how to distinguish the difference, and that's why we live in a society where we live right now where people are running around being with like five year relationships and they have no title. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so anyways, from, a, from out the gate, like the guys that I would go out on dates and stuff, they knew that I was like going out with different people. But at that point, I think the most prominent was the Leo guy that I was dating that I have been dating for a while and the Aries guy. Right. Yeah. So I kind of had a mental 
you know, conversation with myself where I was like, okay, this Leo guy, I've known him longer. I feel less. And this Aries guy, I've been dealing with him for a little bit. And like, he's actually making me feel something, you know? Yeah. Uh, so at that point, when he basically gave me the ultimatum, like, I need to know, like, what, what are we? What, what's going to happen? Yeah, yeah. Um, and one thing that stood out to me was, I need to know that you're trying to make a future with us because if not, there's no point to this. So at that point in time, I, I kind of felt like he put me on the spot, but at the same time, I was like, he's right. So I made the spontaneous decision. I didn't even, I wasn't even planning on taking him. And I decided to end up taking him to that gathering. And basically everybody publicly knew that I was with him at that point in time, Yeah, yeah. including the Leo guy. Cause the Leo guy was there. Hey, yeah. Yes. Um, so it was a harsh way of <laughs> yeah, letting him know. Yeah, I mean, but I feel like at that point, it, I, I've always been like that when it comes to relationships. I just know that it's going to be something serious. And, like, at that point, I just jump, you know? Yeah. So anyways, uh, fast forward, we end up, you know, living together. We end up moving in with each other. We get married, whatever. We make a life. And one of the things that I can say, I think, and for those of you guys out there, you can comment below and let me know if you guys have been married or dated an Aries man or a woman. Um, they have this reputation of being like players. And yeah, that's true because they do play the field. But I think that more than anything, the moment that they feel a connection, you become their obsession. Yeah. Like you become their center of the, their world. Like there was even when we we're just dating, there was nothing that would not happen in his life where he would come to me and tell me. And it wasn't like he needed me to give him a yes or a no. It was more like just to include me yeah. and make me feel like he was thinking long-term. He yeah. was thinking longevity, you know? Um, even a couple of like, um, like job moves and stuff, he brought it up and he was like, what do you think of this? And I was like, at that point, I yeah. was like, oh shit, why are you telling me? Yeah, right yeah. Now? And he was like, no, I just want to include you in, in my decision Aww, making. So that's one of the things about Aries, that when it comes to them being emotionally invested, you're going to know because they include you in their plans. They're yeah, constantly yeah. wanting to, like, I don't want to say get validation from you, but it's almost like they are very much, like, like their love language, I think, has a lot to do with, like, love affirmations as well. Because they are your biggest cheerleader, they are your biggest, like, yeah. like, I kid you not, not once did, in the whole years that I was, like, married to him, not once did I get ready to go somewhere, and did he not hype me up. He was like, oh, my God, you look You're so beautiful. beautiful. Like, he's, like, the type of guy that you... To tell you. Yeah, constantly, you know, and they're extremely touchy, like, extremely touchy. Yeah, yeah. So you constantly feel... Desired by them, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so I think that, uh, again, for every Aries, it's going to be different. But from all the ones I've dealt with, they've always been like that. They're, like, extremely touchy. And I don't know what it is, but the majority of, of Aries, <laughs> and y'all comment below and let me know, but what I've noticed is that they have a thing for legs. Really? Like, all the Aries that I've ever dated were, like, obsessed with my legs, like, constantly they have this constant need to be touching yeah yeah to be caressing or like smacking your legs like i don't know what it is but anyways um yeah they're very intense they're definitely not for the week and the reason i say that is because if you're the type an example if you're a libra right and we're talking about libras being indecisive if you're a libra and you're dealing with an aries and let's say you guys have an argument aries the way they process their emotion is through argumentative like like, stand your ground on what we're arguing, and they'll respect you for Yeah. That. A Libra would probably walk away from that argument, and an Aries gets much more frustrated, and their anger comes up mm -hmm. when you silence them, when you don't allow them to express themselves. Yeah, yeah. So, I, that, an example, a Libra, if you're a Libra out there and you're dating an Aries, let me know how that shit goes, because uh, they're very argumentative. I, myself, obviously, I'm a Capricorn, so I'm fucking argumentative. And that was the thing about us. We rarely, and I kid you not, and keep in mind, I met this guy, uh, he was so above mature for, for me, 
at that point in time, I, I was extremely self. I learned a lot from him because I learned what unconditional love was Yeah, from him. I knew what it, he taught me what it was to be truly loved. Uh, something that up until that point I hadn't experienced. And it was just, I, I just feel like anybody that's hearing me would probably be like, so what happened there, you know? Yeah, yeah. I just wasn't ready for that type of commitment at that point in my life. Um, but it was definitely a soulmate connection. He was, like I said, I have nothing bad to say about him. Um, the thing is that, yes, when we, we rarely argued, but when we did argue, yeah. we both stood on what we were arguing about. So we were very stubborn. And our arguments could go for fucking hours. Like, for hours. Because both of you guys thought you had the last, last word. Yeah. yeah. Um, but also, the, the I guess you could say the, <laughs> the dark, the darker shadow side of a Capricorn and an Aries is obviously intensity equals passion. So all of those arguments would turn into makeup sex really quick. And it even became like almost a joke with us where where you guys had to have an argument. Yeah. And I remember once a few times we're lying in bed and we're talking and we start laughing and we're like, weren't we just arguing like for fucking five hours? And he was like, yeah, but at this point, let's just skip the arguing part and get to this part, you know? Um, yeah, we were very, very sexually connected. And yeah. And I think this is where were they Aries, good and Aries is my top. Absolutely, 100%. Oh, Aries. I have never, ever been with an Aries that was not passionate and that did not make it about you. Like, they are so giving. <laughs> Super giving. Super giving. They try to please you more than themselves. Very, very. Like, to them, I think that their ego stroke comes from you telling them what a great lover they are. Because the more you do that, the more subserving they are. They are. To you. Mm -hmm. They are literally like I seen this meme on Instagram, right? And it's a girl sitting in like on a throne, and there's a guy like that's on their knees, mm -hmm. and they're kissing the girl's feet. And I I seen that, and I I created another yeah, meme yeah. on top of that where I was like, if this is how, if this is not how you treat you, I, I don't how want you it. Treat me, I don't want it. Um, and it gave me very much Aries vibes, not to say that they're submissive because they're fucking not, they're extremely, if it's a guy, they're extremely masculine. They like, they take offense when you make them feel like they're weak, yeah. you know what I mean? But when it comes to their partner, like I said, and when it comes to them being emotionally invested, meaning we're talking about love at this point, um, when they love you. It's all about you, girl. It is all about you. All the areas, people that are, and I've had a feel, always, even when it's been casual and it's like, we know what we're here yeah. for, let's get to it, they still make it about you, Aww. like, all the time. Now you add the fact that they love you, like, they worship the ground you walk on, so long as you do the same to them. Yes. Because the moment you don't, or the moment they feel that you're not Matching, their, matching yeah, yeah. their energy, they start to slowly get a bit more distant. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and even at that, I, I still never had an Aries where I can say, oh, yeah, they gave me the cold shoulder. Definitely not. Um, but they are very much, like I said, they are stubborn as hell, uh, like I said. But when it comes to, let's talk about the bedroom, right, since we're already talking about that. They are fucking passionate. Whenever you want it, let's go, let's do it. Oh, you did say that they were adventurous. Very, too, right? Adventurous, all right? <laughs> now, I'm a Capricorn, you guys, and I have Scorpio stellium. What does that mean? I, I'm, I'm not that, like, adventurous. I'm very methodical about shit. He is the one person that when I got, like, when I started dating, he got me out of my comfort zone because he was into sports. He was into hiking he was in temp going to the mountains you remember yeah, going yeah. to the lake yeah i wasn't about that shit like never been about that shit but he was he loved it so i would be like fine i'm open to it and the more i did it the more i enjoyed myself yeah. um but yeah there is a few times where we went hiking and like right there in public oh my <laughs> god <laughs> crazy and that's been with other aries people as well like it you say go and they're ready. They're jumping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they're they're very passionate. They're very intense. Another thing that I can say is Aries is very impatient. So 
if you're dating you guys if you guys are dating an aries and you really want like let's just say you've never seen their animal animal instinct and what i mean by that is you've never triggered their animal nature do this okay next time you're gonna hang out with them or next time you're going to see them slowly tell them what you plan wearing and when you get ready text them what you're wearing right mm -hmm. and then casually mention what you want to do or what you're going to do to them i assure you that if you do that it's going to get their mind like thinking like yeah, they're going to get mindset and you're going to see really how pos like not possessive how obsessive they can become because they will either text you or call you or be like i'm on my way like I kid you not, they take that shit to a whole nother level. level if you know how to play with their desires. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's with all the areas I've ever dealt with. I noticed that, like, I already know their nature, so when I would do that, it was, like, to the point where... Um, where they're like, yeah, hey, let me just do I was, right yes, now. Exactly. Uh, I remember one time I was, you know, I was dating this other guy. He was in Aries, and I knew that, right? I knew that aspect to them, and I remember... I casually said that I was like at the mall or I don't remember where. And he was like, oh, I'm sure you look so adorable. And I was like, you should see my legs. I'm wearing some sh a short skirt, right? So that's mm -hmm. all I said. So then he started blowing my phone up and I wasn't responding. I was doing it on purpose, of course. Um, so I wasn't responding. I get home and then he texted me and he was like, I'm going to call you. So when he calls me, I answered and he's like, come outside. And I'm like, what? You're here? And he's like, yeah, I just want to see you. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So they're very impulsive. Like when you play yeah. with their desires, like they're very impulsive. I've had Aries men that just because I felt like it, I hit them up and I'm like, guess what I'm wearing? And I know what that's going to happen, what that means, you know? And they're like, I'm on my way. Like, like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, yeah. I have a, the, the other, the other Aries that comes to mind is a person that I've had a, casual relationship with it's never been nothing serious right we know what it is and that's what it is and not once have i ever and here's the thing whenever he's dating or whatever i'm dating someone like we just don't stop talking yeah we stop talking other. when i become single i know that if i hit him up like in a heartbeat like he's there you know what i mean yeah um and it's it's a it's a very <laughs> it's a very complex situation here but uh yeah that's another person that comes to mind that when it comes to the bedroom extremely passionate extremely about me and what i want and um they're very experimental as well oh and another thing that i was going to say about aries is that when it comes to lingerie and playing with their mind like i said uh, so if you guys are dating an aries or if you want to date an aries get them with that hook of when you text them and even if you guys are just barely getting to know each other, casually tell them that you're wearing like a cute top or like, don't, don't get that, you know, I'm not telling yeah, you yeah. to get that aggressive or yeah, that dirty yeah. if you're just talking to them. But I assure you that if you start doing that more than more uh, likely, you're going to notice the switch in them where they're going to be more constant in their communication yeah. with you. Um, and with this Aries that comes to mind, like I said, I remember the whole day I was telling them, oh, I just got a new, a new fit. Wait until you see it. Yeah, da, yeah. Da, da, da. Girl, by the time he was like through the door, he was already busting. I kid you not. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I cannot tell you, even the, even the guy I was married to, I cannot tell you how many times I got so mad because I would buy really nice, expensive fucking lingerie. And by the time we were done, it, it was, it was ripped like you fucking ripped this like what the hell like they're they just cannot resist they can't they can't it's like it's like it was funny because when it comes to mind is one time a lot it was a, a suit right it was like a bodysuit um and it was like you know we were like in the moment or whatever <laughs> it's like what the fuck how do i take this off <laughs> And he was so frustrated that he just ripped the shit oh out, my like, goodness. completely. Um, but, yeah, very passionate, very intense, very spontaneous. To me, top-notch lovers, Aww. for sure.
Um, I know I, I have a few friends that have dated Aries and they say that they just cannot deal with them because they're too much. They could be too much. Their personality could be very big. Um, I'm used to that and I like that actually. So again, like I said, if you're a little bit more on the softer side, definitely Aries is not your cup of tea. But yeah, that's, uh, so there you go. That's all of the signs. There you go, Aries. I hope you guys enjoy. enjoy. Comment below. Let us know what you guys think. Let us know your experience too. And we will see each other soon. Alrighty. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.